The story begins with all sixteen-year-olds being initiated into warriors of the goddess, she will give them the strength to fight great evil. A man in a cassock in front of a huge statue of a goddess declares the ceremony of summoning heavenly weapons open. He raises his eyes to the sky and frowns, praising the goddess. The man raises both hands up with his little fingers, index fingers and thumbs extended, the crowd thinks the director is strange. Everyone takes up the director's cry, raises their hands to the sky and praises the goddess. Several people turn around and wonder how Dongfein can sleep at such a crucial moment. A guy with a shaved head peers into the face of the sleeping Dongfein and is surprised that he can sleep standing up. The guy is clearly dreaming about something good and the crowd decides not to pay attention to him, because it will be fun if he misses everything. The pink-haired girl sticks out her tongue coquettishly and says that Dongfein is her hero, she slides her hand down her leg. The guy, meanwhile, drools and snot and grins, praising the goddess in his sleep. The girl throws her head back and smiles contentedly, she says that she noticed that Dongfein is very devoted to her. She beckons him to approach her to receive his reward, the guy grabs her leg and calls her a beautiful goddess. She cups his face with rivers and asks if he likes it, he replies that he adores her. Suddenly someone calls him an idiot and asks him what he's doing, Dongfein opens his eyes, blood flowing from his nose. The director doesn't understand what's happening, he grabbed his face with his hand, trying to push him away, Dongfein recognizes who is in front of him. Dongfein grabbed the director's leg and reached out to him with a kiss, the director asks to let him go, people took out their phones and took pictures of them. The director looks at Dongfang with disgust and says that you can't behave like that on a holy day. He hits Dongfein in the face with a backhand and shouts for him to get out of his sight, the guy is already turned around his axis by the force of the blow. Dongfein holds his cheek and looks around, people from the crowd tell him to come to his senses as today is a very important day and praise the goddess. Every June, sixteen-year-olds gather at the goddess's statue to become her great warriors. Their planet, Juno, was ideal for life, but one fateful day everything changed. A huge bloody star appeared on their horizon, which brought a lot of troubles and bad weather. A certain entity named Anyu appeared from the star and began to sweep away everything from its path, no weapon could withstand him. Everything around was plunged into darkness, but at the very last moment a goddess descended from heaven. The goddess is dressed in light clothes, her palms are directed outward, and a golden halo shines around her head. The goddess gifted the warriors with heavenly weapons, which were necessary to fight evil. Thanks to the goddess, humanity had a chance to fight back against Anu and the great evil that threatened to destroy Juno. It was from that moment that becoming a warrior of the goddess became the goal and responsibility of every person. The man in the robe tells the girl on earth that you need to clearly imagine your heavenly weapons when you pray to the goddess. He says she will feel the goddess welcoming her, the girl sits with her eyes closed and tells the director to shut up. Suddenly, a golden light in front of her face causes her to open her eyes, pieces of magic fly straight into her face. Oka laughs and spins around, Receiving the spear just like she wanted, the spear is made of golden energy and dispels sparks of magic. The director congratulates her on successfully summoning the celestial weapon and invites the next person. A girl with short red hair receives a sword, it's big and she really likes it, people around are drooling at the sight of her figure. The guy with grey hair gets a katana, he likes that it suits his style, people around are amazed that it is very sharp. The next one gets the frying pan, he admits that he thought about food during prayer and does not know what to do next. A girl with short green hair receives a machine gun, she doesn't know how to use it. Dong Fein looks at others and thinks that everyone got what they wanted, a guy in the background with blonde hair is walking with a prohibitory sign. Oh clenches his hand and realizes that he can't concentrate because of what happened yesterday. But suddenly his confidence fades, his face turns pale and he remembers something, his face shows uncertainty. Dong Fein remembers coming to the night market to drink, there are many cars parked around the establishment with a large sign. Dong Fein plays the console and asks why such important people drink with him here, the woman tells him to be quiet and hands him a beer. The man with sideburns says he is tired of drinking and tells the woman to drink with Dong Fein without him, Dong Fein makes a toast. The girl asks Dong Fein if he is ready for tomorrow's ceremony and brings a glass of beer to her mouth. With her other hand she dips a man with sideburns into beer, he tries to escape, but only gurgles into the glass. 
Dong Fein says that his right hand has no equal, he promises that he will soon defeat on you and save their world. The girl pours beer from her glass right in his face and screams at him not to talk nonsense. The girl is angry that Dong Fein only thinks about fighting and killing, a man with sideburns asks to change the subject. The girl and the man hover over the guy and say that they have prepared training materials for him so that he is well prepared. The girl and man laugh and take out a bag with all sorts of things and promise that Dung Fana will be interested. The girl hands him a box with a disc and tells him to take the disc with him and be sure to watch it before the ceremony. Dung Fana wonders why they prepared a gift for him, the guy has a headache, but he puts the disc into the player. Dong Fane winces when a warning message appears on the screen in English, he has no idea what this means. A screensaver with the title, The Secret of the Goddess, is displayed on the screen, the goddess in the image is in an enticing pose. A girl with pink hair opens her mouth, sticks out her tongue and smiles, she asks if he is ready to know the goddess's secret. Dong Fane flinches when the girl's gaze hits him, he wonders if this is really a goddess, the girl on the screen calls him a sweet warrior. Dong Fein freezes with the remote control in his hand and begins to realize that something is wrong. The girl with pink hair says that very soon he will learn the secret of the goddess, the guy understands that this doesn't look like educational material at all. The girl takes off her clothes and asks if he is ready for pleasure, Dong Fein understands that this is not the time to watch something like this before the ceremony. He clutches the remote control in his hand and decides to watch just a little bit, blood starts pouring out of his nose. The director says that anyone who treats the goddess with such sacrilege will never receive even a drop of heavenly power from her. Dong Fein tells the director that he shouldn't watch this and will turn off the video now. The girl hugs the remains of her clothes to herself and says that she will now show him real paradise, Dong Fein didn't expect that this was just the beginning. The girl approaches the screen and points her finger at the viewer, she says he is her hero. Dong Fein's nose continues to bleed from excitement, he realizes that he has no strength left to resist. He begins to feel dizzy, his nose is bleeding, and his teeth are clenched, he screams that he can't stand it anymore. He picks up the napkins in the dark box with his finger and quickly pulls them towards him. Dong Fein wraps himself in a blanket and throws away napkin after napkin, muttering something about his goddess. The crowd whispers that Dong Fein has fallen asleep again, the director approaches the guy lying on the ground and says that he is stupid. The director shouts that everyone else has already summoned their celestial weapons and tells Dong Fana not to stand rooted to the spot. The robe director kicks Dong Fang's butt and tells him to move faster, Dong Fein shouts that he is on his way. The director says that Dong Fana just needs to present her celestial weapon and wait for a sign from the goddess. The director asks the great goddess to bestow strength on this young man, Dong Fein squeezes his hand, concentrating. He mutters that he wants a big sword and opens one eye, looking at the statue above him. The statue looks at him with sparkling eyes and asks what answer he expects from her. Elements of yesterday's recording with a pink-haired girl in various enticing poses emerge in his memory. Dong Fein only has yesterday's recording with the secret of the goddess in his head, he is angry with himself that this is all he can think about at a crucial moment. He closes his eyes and tries to think only about the weapon he wants to get, namely the sword. He falls forward in front of the statue and screams that he can't concentrate, the director says he can try next year. The crowd is shouting that there is a problem, the director aloofly says that the guy just couldn't summon a weapon. Above the statue of the goddess the sky cleared of clouds, the goddess gave her sign to Dung Fana. The director opened his mouth in surprise and does not believe that Dong Fane is so strong, everyone doesn't understand what's happening. The director looks at the statue from below and tells everyone to wait, the goddess statue's eyes closed again. The director is horrified by the level of this power and shouts that Dung Fana will never be able to cope with it. The guy looks up in fear and asks the director how this could happen. Suddenly, a golden stream of energy appears between the clouds and rushes straight down, ready to hit Dong Fein. Someone shouts that divine power is descending, others shout for everyone to duck down, because it is unknown what will happen from such power. The director cannot believe that such a powerful force is suddenly falling on Dong Fang and says that he cannot cope with it. The director jumped off the platform and hid among the crowd, he shouts for Dong Fein to hold on with all his might. Suddenly, a stream of power hits Dong Fang, blinding him, he screams from the intensity of what is happening. Among the clouds of dust and magical sparks, a silhouette with long, 
flowing hair flashes. Those present realize that Dong Fein is alive when someone coughs on the platform, the director asks what kind of weapon he received. The statue of the goddess was damaged, her halo is damaged, and the broken edges still glisten with magic from the ray that made them. Dong Fein coughs and asks if he is alive and why his body suddenly became so heavy, a pink-haired girl lies on his chest. People in the crowd understand that this is not a weapon, but a girl, and do not understand how this can be. The girl opens her eye slightly, lying on the guy's chest, she doesn't understand what just happened. People in the crowd are shocked that she is alive, people ask the director what happened. The girl pushes off Dong Fein's chest and sits on him, groaning and looking around. Dong Fein looks at her silently and does not blink, the girl's pink curls almost reach his face. The girl turns her gaze to him and realizes that she is sitting astride him, Dong Fein asks what happened. The girl leans towards him and peers into his face, her curls fall in his face. Dong Fein asks if the ceremony was successful and who she is, the girl calls him her hero and asks how he could forget. She presses her chest against him and hugs his neck, she says she is his goddess. Since yesterday he had been thinking about her non-stop and that's why she ended up here, she smiles happily at the shocked guy. He shouts that this couldn't happen, the girl clings to him worriedly, calling him her hero. Everyone is shocked that the summoning ceremony was successful and Dong Fein summoned the girl as a celestial weapon. The director is furious how this could happen, also in front of the goddess statue, others ask if Dong Fein really called a person. The girl's hair is pinned back with a blue bow, someone approaches her from the left. She frowns and turns to the director, the pink-haired girl is still riding Dong Fang. Dong Fein looks at the director whose shadow fell on his head, he asks what happened during the summoning of weapons. The director says that celestial weapons are always summoned by the decision of the goddess and she bestows the weapon that a person desires with all his heart. The director looks at Dong Fang with disgust and asks how he dared to summon such an inappropriate creature. He calls Dong Fein an idiot and asks why he decided to disgrace the sacred ceremony. Dong Fein looks at the director and sweats heavily with excitement, stutters and doesn't know what to say. He slips out from under the girl, she looks back at him and calls him master, the director is also taken aback by his actions. Dong Fein rolls over his back and pushes off the ground with his hand, straightening up, he was only wearing his underwear. He runs away and shouts that he is not to blame for anything, the director shouts at him, asking where he is running. Dong Fein is crying with shame because he called out the girl from yesterday's video in front of the crowd, he continues to run away further. He looks back and laments that he will no longer see a bright future and a magnificent sword. Suddenly, a hand grabs his panties, surprising him greatly, someone is trying to stop him. It turns out to be pink-haired Dina, who screams that he can't escape from her, he yells at her to stop following him. She does not detach from him and says that it does not matter to her what her hero will do, because from now on she will always be there. He rushes forward, yelling that he doesn't agree, a piece of his underpants remains in her tight grip. Dunfane shouts that this must all be a dream and that in reality a sword awaits him, a child asks a passerby why this guy is naked. He quickly slams the door behind him once he reaches his place of residence, he sighs, tired from running. He holds the door handle with his hand and is glad that he broke away, although flight is always a shameful way out of a situation. He decides that he shouldn't have interacted with this girl after all, he wipes the sweat from his face with the back of his hand and looks up. Dina sits on his bed and says that he is sweating and needs a bath and lunch, but she also sees a third option. She picks up a piece of his underpants and asks if he might want to put his clothes on first. Dong Fein looks doomedly at the girl, who somehow ended up in the room before him. A crowd with loudspeakers gathered outside the windows of his room, they demand that Dong Fein come out and answer for the desecrated ceremony. Dong Fein looks at the egg that broke on his window and realizes that for them it is a walking corpse. He pushes her away with his hand and asks her to stay away, she replies that the summoned creature cannot be far away. Dong Fein twitches, realizing the meaning of her words, he asks if she is a real summoned being. Dina says that just as the goddess was once called, so he called her now, she asks if he can't see that she is a goddess. She smiles and remarks that it's a secret and she won't say anything more. He looks at the ill-fated disc and remembers that the recording was called The Secret of the Goddess and he completely forgot about it. He looks into the box with the disc and realizes that something is wrong with it, Dina wrapped her arms and legs around him from behind. 
He throws the box on the floor, realizing that yesterday there was a completely different disc there, Dina enjoys the hug. The impact causes a disc to fall out of the box, on which, apparently, there is something related to pigs. Dong Fein looks at the disc that fell out of the box due to the impact and asks how this is possible. Dong Fein decides that May can help him, Dina puts her chin on his shoulder and hugs him from behind, asking who it is. Dong Fein frowns in concentration and dials the desired contact on his smartphone, he tells the girl that this is his friend. The phone flashes a photo of May with a glass of beer in her hand, Dong Fein realizes that she answered the phone. Dong Fein shouts something about the video they showed him, May pretends to be an answering machine and says that the subscriber is out of network coverage. She tells him to call back later, Dong Fein says that he is not stupid and definitely recognizes her voice. May replies that it is absolutely not her and throws the phone into a glass of beer. Dong Fein dials her again and again, but now the real answering machine says the caller is unavailable. He furrows his eyebrows and realizes that May absolutely knows something. Dina asks the owner why he doesn't talk to her, Dong Fein says not to call him that and opens the instant noodles. He screams for her to leave him alone, because she destroyed everything he strived for, Dina asks if he wants his sword. He says that he wants to, because he worked very hard for him, Dina asks if he really only thought about her at the ceremony. She asks how any bladed weapon can compare to her, Dong Fein replies that he has not thought about her and does not understand what use she is. She snuggles closer to him and calls him master in his ear, Dong Fein looks at her and asks what she wants. Dina wrapped her legs around his torso from the back and said that she was hungry, Dong Fein gets angry and hits the wall with her fist because she also feels hungry. Two cups of noodles are on the table, the lids hold the forks, Dong Fein ended up making noodles for her too. The girl laughs with happiness because Dong Fein has prepared food for her, Dong Fein frowns and chuckles at her words. Dong Fein opens the lid on the noodles and asks Dina to tell everything from the beginning and where she came from. The girl replies that she came down from heaven because he called her, she also opens the finished noodles, dropping her fork. Dong Fein says that she cannot be a goddess and asks if she is a weapon, Dina replies that she is so special, special. Dong Fein raises an eyebrow in confusion, he thinks about her words about being alone. The girl ate and stroked her belly, saying that it was delicious, Dong Fein looks at her disapprovingly. Next to the girl there is a pile of empty noodle packages, Dong Fein calls her a glutton to herself. Dina asks what their plans are for the day, he replies that she should not think that they will always be together now and that she should not spread her legs. The girl lazily leans back onto the bean bag chair on which she has been sitting all the time and groans contentedly. Dong Fein comes closer to her and realizes that she has fallen asleep, this calms him down, as he already thought that something had happened. The girl sniffles and drools, apparently having fallen asleep in the comfort of a huge bean bag chair, her hair fluttered beneath her. There is a blush on the girl's cheeks, she sleeps in a contented and well-fed sleep, Dong Fein decides that she needs to be moved somewhere. He carefully places her on his bed and grumbles that he didn't think that after 16 years of training he would summon a girl. Dina turns over on her side and presses herself against the pillow, he understands that with such a weapon he cannot become a hero and kill on you. With frustration, he throws his sports jacket on the bottom edge of the bed, next to the legs of the fallen asleep girl. He lies down on the floor, covers himself with a blanket and grumbles that this is the last thing he will do for her. Dong Fein wearily closes his eyes and says that tomorrow everything will be clearer, but he absolutely must go through the summoning ceremony again. Dina asks why he needs to go through the summoning ceremony again, Dong Fein replies that he can't become a hero with someone like her. The girl innocently plays with the straps of her clothes and asks if behind every hero there should be his sexy girlfriend. She touches his mouth playfully and says that she wants to be his lucky charm, he looks at her with annoyance. He shrinks away from her and shouts that she should not come near him, but in reality he wakes up from sleep, opening his eyes wide. He looks at the ceiling and tries to come to his senses, he breathes loudly and realizes that it was just a dream. He says with relief that he thought it was real and he was scared, suddenly someone's hand flies straight towards his face. Dina lies next to him on the floor under his blanket and covers his mouth with her palm, Dong Fein shudders in surprise. Dong Fein's eyes widen in surprise and tries to figure out if he is still sleeping. Dina is snoring calmly in her sleep, but suddenly someone says that it doesn't matter who is sleeping and tells the guy to kiss her. 
This turns out to be a projection of Dina, Dong Fein tells her to get out of his head, the projection only responds that it wants its hero to conquer it. Dina crosses her legs over Dong Fan's legs, she's asleep and doesn't realize she's doing this, Dong Fein freezes in place. Dina hugs him by the neck and he mutters through his teeth that he can't continue like this, the projection asks if he is a virgin. Dong Fein, with a complete lack of understanding of his further actions, replies that he had no one before. The projection tells him not to resist his desires and in any case he can go through the summoning ceremony again. Dong Fein looks at Dina in fascination and mutters that it is just a dream, he reaches his hand towards her face, but Dina opens her eyes, waking up. The girl opens her eyes in surprise, trying to understand the situation, Dong Fein squeals in fear that she has woken up. Dina's eyes sparkle, sitting up straight, Dong Fein asks for forgiveness and asks to understand him correctly, because he did nothing wrong. The girl's eyes glow an unnatural yellow color, she touches his shoulder and asks who he is, Dong Fein asks what she means. An angry expression appears on the girl's face, she pulls back and asks how she got here. She knees Dong Fein in the stomach, throwing him away like he weighs nothing, along with the blanket. The girl bends over and hits him in the face with her feet, her eyes flashing furiously, Dong Fein only manages to call out to her before the next blow. The girl grabs him in mid-flight from her own blow by the ankle and pulls him to the ground, her eyebrows are furrowed and her hair is an unusual light color. She launches it across the floor like a bowling ball, bed linen and pillows fly in different directions. Dong Fein flies into the wall with his back, the blow knocks all the air out of his lungs, he asks Dina what happened to her. The girl rushes at him with rage and incredible speed and screams for him to die quickly. Dong Fein begins to cry in pain and annoyedly asks who he managed to summon. The girl's foot lands next to his head, knocking cement chips out of the wall. The girl freezes with her foot in the wall, from which smoke comes from the force of her blow, she freezes and asks what he's talking about. She worriedly asks him what he meant when he said he called her. There is a divine seal in the girl's pupil, she is surprised and realizes that she is in the human world. Those who watch the video can witness the rarest spectacle of such a powerful force descending from the heavens. This guy really survived, and some girl appeared, noise appears on the screen. People are discussing that now the southern capital has become a laughing stock, what the guy was thinking about during the ritual and it is unheard of for a person to be summoned. The director says that it is necessary to call this incident a failed call, another says that such a thing could raise popular anger. Others say that with the response of the goddess, the ritual is considered successful and regardless of their attitude, too many people have seen it to hide it. Someone shouts for everyone to shut up, the director is confused and looks at the person who has attracted attention. The director shudders when he recognizes the chief of staff, he stands on the balcony above and says that he has a verdict regarding the incident. The chief of staff says to consider the call a failure, others below respond to the chief of staff that this is unacceptable. The head of staff leans on his elbows and leans forward, he says that although their situation is difficult, it will open up new opportunities for them. The head turns his gaze to the video from Dong Fein's call being played again and says that these opportunities will be given by the people themselves. His glasses display Dina's face, he tells everyone present to be more attentive and careful. The girl with wheat-colored hair and blue eyes frowns and orders Dong Fana to speak. Dong Fein turns pale under the onslaught of the power of her limb and asks what exactly he should be talking about. The girl asks about the conscription, Dong Fein notices the change in Dina's appearance and asks what's wrong with her, the girl asks why she is here. He says that there was a call for weapons and she appeared, and in general she herself came to his house, and then snuck under his blanket. The girl frowns in confusion, she asks if he is talking about Shenu's call and how this is possible. Dong Fein doesn't understand how and why she forgot everything, the girl's leg leaves his neck, opening access to oxygen. She excitedly tells him that he is lying to her, she doesn't understand how Shenu's call can summon her herself. Dun Fein replies that he doesn't know, because he tried to summon the great sword, and she appeared and asks to believe him. The girl understands that he does not know who she is, he asks with an awkward laugh if she is a human and a weapon. He laughs and suggests that she is a great sword in the flesh, his eyebrows form a little house. The girl shudders at the absurdity of his assumption, she looks at him menacingly, asking about the sword in the flesh. 
Dong Fein tries to cover himself with his hands and says that he just voiced an assumption and asks for forgiveness. The girl sparkles her eyes and frowns and asks how so much of this kind of nonsense comes out of him. Dong Fein asks if she is an actress, she asks how dare he continue to insult her. Since he likes the great sword so much, she summons the sacred sword Fran, a sword materializes from her hand. She swings her sword and raises dust from the floor, Dong Fein asks if this guess from him is also wrong. The girl frowns and asks how he has the courage to compare her to a simple weapon. Dong Fein frowns and closes one eye, looking at the girl, he grits his teeth and asks what he should call her. The girl raises the sword above her head and realizes that she cannot move, she twitches her limbs, trying to move from her place. Dong Fein notices a symbol on his hand, he remembers that Shen Wu cannot harm its owner. Dong Fein looks at his glowing hand and assumes that he has a weapon, the girl, with shock on her face, recognizes Shen Wu's seal. The golden patterns of the seal begin to spread from the guy's hand to his elbow. Dong Fein says it's a contract seal and no wonder it can't move, he looks at the girl knowingly. The girl tries to move and lower the sword on him and asks how dare he say that. The guy tells her to stop trying to kill him and waves his hand, calling Shen Wu away, the girl doesn't understand what's happening. Suddenly some impulse strikes her, she bulges her eyes, her gaze becomes unfocused. The girl begins to fall forward, the sword in her hands disappears, turning into energy, her hair begins to turn pink. Dong Fein covers himself from the bright glow with his hand and screams in fear. The director brings the man to Dong Fein's house, a man with glasses pays attention to the glow in the window of the building. The man with glasses says that he is surprised that the director himself decided to tell the boy everything, the director orders him to wait here. The director frowns and says that he is as surprised as the man, but he has no other choice. Dina lies on the floor, her pink hair scattered beneath her, Dong Fein stands next to her and says that he shouted an order that was taught at the academy. Dong Fein accidentally shouted the command and didn't expect it to work, he looks at his hand and realizes that this is not how the seal usually works. He looks at Dina worriedly and worries that something has gone wrong, he remembers that she took out the great sword. The girl closes her eyes and clenches her teeth and fist, she sighs, lying on the floor, and turns her head. Dong Fein turns her over, trying to find where she hid the sword, since Shen Yu can't summon Shen Yu. He pulls the bow on her head and tries to activate Fran's sacred sword, because with it he has every chance of success. He examines her wrist with a magnifying glass and tries to discover the hiding place, Dina mutters, without waking up, something about this and that in her mouth. Dong Fein jumps up and asks what's in her mouth and why she can't spit it out, she mumbles about her mouth. Dong Fein suggests that her sword is an object that can be swallowed, the girl sighs restlessly in her sleep. Dong Fein opens her mouth and mutters that he knew she hid the sword somewhere on herself, the girl snores while he puts his fingers in her mouth. Dong Fein is sweating and nervous, he says that there is only drool under his fingers and he cannot find the sword there. A girl with a blush on her cheeks mutters that she has delicious noodles in her mouth, Dong Fein's fingers part her lips. Dong Fein turns pale and disappointed, he looks up doomedly and asks what kind of noodles she is muttering about. Suddenly, a sound behind the guy attracts his attention, he shudders and turns back. Suddenly the director bursts into the guy's room, hitting him in the back of the head with the door, the girl in his arms mutters something about chicken noodles. The old man shouts for Dong Fein to rejoice, because the academy has solved his problem. Suddenly the director's speech ends, something on the floor catches his attention, he purses his lips and chuckles questioningly. The director apologizes and says he will come back later, Dong Fein looms over Dina and says that the director got it all wrong. The director says that the academy will not punish him for his actions during the ceremony, Dong Fein fearfully asks if he will really be called again. The headmaster says that the academy recognizes his fighting abilities and his sacred weapon. He says that even if the weapon is a girl, there will be no more problems, Dong Fein tries to object, holding Dina close to him. The director says that from this day on, no one will judge them, Dong Fein remembers how everyone judged him, the director says to forget about it. Dong Fein says that he won't be able to fight using this girl as a weapon, there is confusion on his face. The director agrees and takes out a notepad, he begins to write something down on a notepad, attracting Dong Fein's attention. The director attaches a piece of paper to the sleeping Dina's head, surprising Dong Fein. 
Hanging from the top of the girl's head is a long piece of paper on which the hieroglyphs of a seal are written, Dongfeng is surprised by this. The director announces that his work here is complete and that Dongfeng will let him know when he is ready, Dongfeng tries to contact the director. Dongfeng realizes that they don't know about Shenwu's seal, but they still recognized it, Dina in his arm smacks her lips in her sleep, as if she's eating something. Dongfeng rushes out of his house, throwing open the door, he runs after the director, excitedly begging him to stop. The director gets into the car and says that Dongfeng has tired him out, he says he simply had to convey the academy's decision to him. Dongfeng asks what the academy is after, since he cannot use the girl as a weapon. The director tells him to come up with a solution on his own and if he still has questions, let him discuss them at the Shenwu test. Dongfeng asks what test we are talking about, the director leaves and says that he is looking forward to his speech. A light breeze plays with the leaf at Dongfeng's feet, he is wondering whether to take Dina to fight monsters. Only those who pass the test can gain the right to fight the dark dolls, those who pass it are very strong. Someone ran towards the academy and knocked everyone down, the guys are thinking that they need to take the battle more seriously. The guys decide to defeat these two, who knock down the rest of the participants, because then they won't have to go through the test. Suddenly, one of the guys is hit on the back of the head just at the moment when he was ready to rush into battle. Another guy holds the knocked out man by the collar and says that he is lucky that he managed to stop him, because a disaster would have happened. The two who knocked everyone down are wearing the uniform of the suppression committee, this organization specializes in eliminating heretics. The guy's jaw drops in surprise and he asks again if they really admire the goddess so much that they are ready to destroy those who disagree. The suppression committee is the elite of the capital, the guy asks what they basically forgot here. A guy in a white and orange jacket hits everyone with a police baton, it is difficult to say at the moment what the committee's task is here. The guy spins the baton in his hand and catches it behind his back, prostrate people groan in clouds of dust. A girl with green hair sat down on her knees and asked the goddess to forgive the sins of the defeated, she invites Xiao Jie to clean up the place. Xiao Jie checks the list on his phone and says that they are done, but these guys are just for them to warm up. The girl says that even in this case, any disrespect towards the goddess must be severely punished. The girl suggests that Xiao Jie move on to the next goal, he says that their next target can be called the King of Violators. An image of Dongfeng appears on his phone screen, accused of hugging a woman at a conscription ceremony. Dongfeng asks how Dina can't remember what just happened. He says her hair color changed and she desperately tried to hit him with a sword, the girl looks up at him. The girl says that she doesn't remember and assumes that he dreamed it all, she giggles and playfully holds out her index finger. The girl approaches him and whispers to him that if he wants her to comfort him, she will gladly do so. The guy is indignant and blushes, he stands up, forcing Dina to grab the sleeve of her t-shirt for balance, he asks what nonsense she is talking about. Dina closes one eye and agrees with his words, only to ask if they can eat first and then talk. Dongfeng understands that the director was clearly mistaken and taking her to the test is tantamount to signing his own death warrant. Dongfeng asks Dina if she wants to go with him to the test and if she knows how to fight. The girl thinks for a moment, scratching her chin in thought, she says it's a piece of cake for her. Dongfeng realizes that Dina can turn into a blonde so that her fighting strength will be completely insane. Dongfeng decides that in this case the question of whether she needs to be taken for testing disappears on its own. Dina weakly pushes him with her fist and says that she hit him and this is a real fight, Dongfeng asks what she means. Dongfeng pulls on his jacket as he walks and pulls Dina along with him, he realized that he should not have expected anything extraordinary from her. Dina asks why they are going somewhere, because she hasn't even eaten yet, Dongfeng mutters curses under his breath. Dongfeng asks Dina why she only thinks about food, because she would rather think about him not dying in the competition. They approach the armor shop, the girl inside greets them and recognizes Dongfeng, saying that they haven't seen each other for a long time. The girl says that on TV they only play news about moral decay, Dongfeng tells her to bring him the armor. Dina is surprised that they are in a clothing store and says that all the clothes here are very scary. The girl is surprised that he buys such expensive armor for himself, Dunfane says he is buying armor for Dina. The saleswoman remembers that Dina is the divine weapon that he summoned, her gaze is serene. 
Dong Fein makes an excuse that he thought he would summon an android and did not expect it to be a real person. Dong Fein says that the academy themselves decided that she is now his weapon, Dina complains that she is hungry, but the guy tells her to be patient. Dun Fein points to a set of heavy armor and tells Dina to try on this hell armor. Dun Fein brings the giant helmet to Dina and says that this is the most popular armor in the store, because it is completely impenetrable. Dina imagines herself in this armor and it looks absolutely ridiculous with her cute face and pink bow in her hair. The girl can barely contain her laughter at the thought of such an image, Dong Fein shouts that the armor is excellent and will protect her perfectly during the test. The saleswoman says that the armor costs quite a bit, one and a half thousand academic coins, Dong Fein agrees that it is quite expensive. He asks for a discount, because his aunt went on a mission and left him very little money to live on, the girl says that this will not work. Dong Fein pays for the reservation by phone and says that the saleswoman has no heart, the girl scans his phone. She calmly explains that this store is not hers and she only works here as a salesperson. The girl looks around the hall and asks where his divine weapon went, Dong Fein is startled when he doesn't find Dina. Dong Fein frowns and realizes that Dina has run away somewhere, he begins to look into all the nooks and crannies of the store. Suddenly some movement attracts his attention, he sees pink hair with a blue bow behind the shelf next to him. The guy pulls himself up and looks behind the shelf, he asks what she is looking for there, the girl notices his presence. The girl shows him something and is very proud of her find, Dong Fein doesn't understand what she is showing him. Dina happily reports that this is very good and light armor, Dong Fein says that this armor is too expensive. Dina says that it doesn't matter what it is, but in this armor the most interesting parts of the body will be visible. Two shoppers notice Dong Fein staring at women's underwear and call him a disgusting pervert. Dong Fein doesn't understand why lingerie is sold in an armor store, he frowns and blushes. Dong Fein shudders, remembering that the underwear costs 10,000 academic coins, but Dina asks to buy her exactly that. Dong Fein looks away from Dina, considering such a price to be a robbery, Dina presses the guy, begging him to buy her this armor. The saleswoman smiles, thinking how much she earns from selling underwear, but Dong Fana will never understand this. The girl working as a saleswoman giggles, stretching her lips in a smile, and winks, looking at the guy. Dong Fein snatches the underwear from Dina's hands and shouts that he doesn't have to listen to what Dina wants, he says that this wretched thing needs to be thrown away. Dong Fein stomps her foot and orders Dina to immediately try on the hellish armor, because only it will protect her, the girl giggles with his anger. Dong Fein pushes Dina into the dressing room, handing her a box of armor and ordering her to try it on. The saleswoman says that Dong Fein will have to compensate for the damage to the armor, because this armor is a limited edition, the guy calls her a robber. Dina peeks out from behind the fitting room curtain and calls out to Dong Fein, he widens his eyes in concern and asks what happened. The girl takes him by the sleeve, pulls him towards her and asks him to help her, Dong Fein doesn't understand why and resists, but goes. The girl furrows her eyebrows and looks down worriedly, Dong Fein opens the curtain with his hand and looks inside with a dissatisfied face. Dina has hung herself with separate pieces of armor and says that she doesn't know how to put it on. The guy looks at Dina with a raised eyebrow and says that she can't do it because of the large number of skirts she's wearing. The girl clutches the skull on the clasps and thinks about Dong Fein's words about her skirts. She smiles and blushes, she says she understands him, pressing the skull to her cheek. She begins to take off her clothes and says that she will fix everything now, Dong Fein shouts that she has no reason to completely undress. Dong Fein carefully attaches the new pieces of armor and prepares to put a plate on Dina to protect her back. The girl holds her hair and says that he pulled it too tight, Dong Fein tries to figure out the ties and tells her not to make noise. Dina raises her hands and looks at her chest, which is being squeezed and lifted by a piece of armor on her stomach. Suddenly, a scream is heard from the fitting room, the buyer and saleswoman jump in place in surprise. Dina is trembling, one eye closed, Dong Fein fixes the armor behind her, the girl asks him to be more gentle. He tightens the straps and tells her not to exhale until he's done, Dina takes a mouthful of air and tries to follow his order. Dong Fein sits on the floor and wipes the floor from his forehead from the effort, he is more tired than when he puts the armor on himself. Dina can hardly breathe after the execution with the armor, she stuck her tongue out of her mouth and raised her eyebrows. 
Dong Fein is pleased that he was able to put the breastplate on her, the next step is to put on everything else. Dong Fein grabs the strap and pulls, ordering Dina not to move, the girl is trying to breathe air. Dina tries to crawl out of the booth and screams that she will die if he is so rude to her, the clients jump in surprise when they see her. Dong Fein grabs her ankle and pulls her back into the changing stall, clients ask what kind of stupid pranks they are playing. Dong Fein drags her back and yells at her not to run away because they need to continue, Dina reaches out to other clients for help. Dong Fein scolds her in disappointment that she is not even able to put on armor, the girl moves away from him to the wall and asks for mercy. Dong Fein desperately shouts that without armor they can only meekly wait until they are killed. The customers crowded around the booth with Dong Fein and Dina inside, confused by the sounds coming from inside. The saleswoman shakes her head, looking at the booth from behind the counter, Dina screams that he is too rude and that someone should help her. Dong Fein fastens her armlet and orders her to stand up under the threat of cutting her diet. Someone opens the screen on the booth, Dina moans and tells Dong Fana not to touch her in this place. It turns out to be a saleswoman, she looks impassively at the two in the booth, Dina screams that she can't stand this anymore. Dong Fein notices the saleswoman who rushed into them, he has horns in his hands, Dina is bound by the straps of her own armor. The saleswoman is furious with what she saw and all the commotion they caused in the store with their screams and moans. The saleswoman asks why they shouted, she says irritably that they scared away all her clients. She kicks Dong Fein in the ass and tells him to get lost, he is carrying a box with purchased armor in his hands, Dina happily moves forward. They walk among huge skyscrapers, Dina says that what happened is completely her fault and asks Dong Fein not to be angry with her. Dina asks if she can no longer wear this armor, because it is very heavy and ugly, Dong Fein replies that armor is mandatory. He says that in the test they will have to face dark dolls, and they have no strength at all, so they need to think about how to protect themselves. She gives him a confused look and tells him that she will protect him and not to worry, his eyes widen in surprise. Someone is walking behind them, white shoes with orange sol stop in the middle of the street, their owner looking straight at the couple. Dina says she's sorry and tells Dong Fein to stop sulking, the guy realizes that someone is following them. Dina asks Dong Fein to wait for her, he runs and urges her to follow him faster. Dina looks at Dong Fang with concern and asks why he is so strange and what is the matter, the guy rolls his eyes and says he already said it. Dong Fein says that someone is watching them all the time, in addition, the pursuer gives himself away too much, the guy at the post with the newspaper flinches. The guy at the post frowns and begins to sweat heavily, hiding behind a newspaper, he tries not to show his excitement. Dong Fein sighs and says that he thinks this guy is a pervert, Dong Fein looks at the sky with disappointment on his face. Dong Fein decides that he doesn't want to deal with such idiots and runs away, the guy clutches the newspaper and mutters that they still can't escape. Dong Fein looks around and decides that they have gotten rid of their crazy pursuer, Dina looks to the side and notices someone there. Dina stops at her dream, noticing danger ahead, meanwhile, Dong Fein walks forward with the box until someone stops him. A girl with green hair and a white and orange jacket frowns and calls out to Dong Fein and the girl who walks with him. The girl has a metal stick in one hand and a book in the other, she says they finally found them, Dong Fein asks who they are. The guy who followed them with the newspaper asks if they have heard about the committee to eliminate and punish those who desecrate the goddess. The guy takes out a stick and laughs, admitting that the name is long, but they are known as suppression commissioners. Dong Fein asks what they need, the girl replies that they are pursuing everyone who dared to discredit the name of the goddess and he knows what he did. Dina asks if they want to rob them, Dong Fein frowns, remembering what suppression commissioners usually do. The girl takes out handcuffs and says that Dina is impersonating a goddess, Dong Fein is acting frivolously and in general their behavior is unforgivable. Dong Fein says that the summoning item is a gift from the goddess, besides, the academy recognized his call and the committee must have made a mistake. The girl says that there are no misunderstandings in the lists of commissars and they can only humbly accept the punishment or say goodbye to life. Dong Fein looks around, the commissar runs to him and shouts that resistance is useless. The commissioner knocks the box out of Dong Fein's hands with a stick and calls him a southern capital turtle, Dong Fein recoils from the blow. Dong Fein falls to the ground and Dina runs up to him, 
she shouts that the commissioner is acting like an idiot. Handcuffs fly to the back of Dongfang's head, the girl from the committee shouts for them to obediently put them on. The girl looks down at Dongfang and says that this way they can avoid suffering and bloodshed. The commissioner grabs Dina by the hand and says that she will be destroyed by the elders directly in the court of first instance. Dina screams for her to let her go, Dongfei mutters the girl's words that Dina will be destroyed. The commissioner asks what he said, Dongfei rises and asks if their first priority is to preserve the glory of the goddess. Dongfei gets up on his knees and asks why the committee doesn't kill the villains and burn the dark dolls. Dongfei says that instead of doing important things, they prefer to terrorize ordinary people and wag their tongues. Dong Fein frowns and says that who he calls has nothing to do with them and it's time for them to stop chatting in vain. Dong Fein steps on the handcuffs and demands that the commissioner release Dina and return her to him, the commissioner says this is outright resisting arrest. The girl with green hair turns her head in disbelief and says that Dong Fein has sharp teeth and a boneless tongue. The girl pulls Dina's hand and tells her partner, whose name is Shao Jia that she is leaving Dongfeng to him. Shao Jia calls Dongfang a boy and says that they came from the imperial capital itself to deal with him. The commissioner raises his stick and says that he is very angry and demands that Dongfeng kneel before him. Dongfang frowns at his tone and glares at Shao Jia from under his brows, his gray eyes are full of rage. Dongfeng jumps into the air, avoiding the commissar's strike, Shao Jia misses, his stick hitting the ground where Dongfang was standing. Dong Fein jumps and kicks Shao Jia in the face, causing him to fall to the ground, this attracts the attention of the green-haired girl, who takes Dina away. The commissioner is indignant, he twists, trying to get up, Dong Fein glares back at him furiously. Dong Fein punches the guy in the nose with all his might, he only manages to scream before the force of the blow carries him back. Dong Fein moves away from the guy lying on the garbage bags and says in disappointment that he thought the battle would be more spectacular. The commissioner does not understand how this could happen, because Shao Jia is the elite of the suppression complex. Dong Fein calls her aunt and tells her to take her hand away from Dina, he says she's lucky he doesn't hit women, Dina says he behaved coolly. Dong Fein says that they damaged his Shenhui armor worth a hundred thousand, he extends his hand forward and calls the commissioner aunt. The girl is shocked that they call her aunt, she turns pale and presses her hand to her chest, trembling all over. The girl shudders and turns to look at Dong Fang, she says his behavior and words are unforgivable. The girl tells Shao Jia that she allows him to use the divine weapon and kill Dong Fang. Dong Fang turns around and sees the commissioner, who has risen from the garbage bags and is holding onto the trash can. Dong Fang asks what kind of divine weapon he has, Dina says that the commissioner smiles disgustingly and that blood is flowing from his nose. A glowing blue mark appears on the commissioner's right cheek, his hair goes up, he turns to Dong Fana. The guy concentrates the blue energy coming from the mark on his cheek between his palms, he tells the hero to prepare for despair. Shao Jia decided to summon divine weapons, at the same moment, a bright stream of blue energy absorbs him, Dong Fein and Dina recoil. Dong Fein understands that the madman really decided to summon divine weapons in the residential area. The commissioner's eyes sparkle with a blue glow, he summons a spinning cane of the void, a club appears between his hands. He grabs the baton by the handle and glares at Dong Fang from under his brows. The commissioner is rapidly approaching Dong Fang, raising his arms to strike, Dong Fang understands that the matter is rubbish. Dong Fang lowers his head and grabs Tina's shoulder, he orders her to get out of here quickly. The commissioner quickly runs to Dong Fang, streams of blue energy follow him, Dong Fang raised his leg, preparing to strike. Suddenly, a blue stream almost reaches Dong Fein's face, his eyes widen in horror. The commissioner quickly lowers his baton towards Dong Fein's face, Dong Fein jumps back with his eyes wide and his arms outstretched. Dina opens her eyes in horror and calls out to Dong Fein, her eyes are filled with fear for her master. Shao Jia stabs Dong Fang, streams of energy raise clouds of dust around them. Suddenly a bang is heard, echoing throughout the entire block. Someone is screaming, a surge of golden energy can be seen among the houses. Dong Fein presses the toes of his shoes into the ground, breaking the asphalt, he coughs and blood spews out of his mouth. The commissioner frowns and twists his mouth, not understanding what happened, there are a few drops of Dong Fein's blood on his face. 
Dong Fein stands with a dent in his solar plexus and arrogantly asks if Shao Jia has shown all his strength. Shao Jia is surprised that he not only resisted, but was also able to say something. Dong Fein closed one eye, there are scratches on his face, he dares Shao Jia to tell him something else. Shao Jia is furious that the trash, who doesn't even have a divine weapon, actually withstood his attack. He raises his club, behind which a tail of divine energy begins to stretch, he wants to see how Dong Fein handles this time. He rushes as fast as he can towards Dong Fang, clouds of dust rise behind him, he shouts that now Dong Fein will close her eyes forever from his hand. Dong Fein froze in place, he realizes that his body has stopped listening to him, he stops noticing the world around him. Dong Fein bends and trembles, realizing that he is unable to resist the divine weapon. Dong Fein tucks his chin to his chest and looks forward, he realizes that today may be his last day among the living. The girl with green hair frowns and says that the committee's mission here is completed. The girl turns and tells Dung Fana that his time as a heretic has come, suddenly something catches her attention. Dina stands in front of Dong Fein and shouts that Shao Jia should not dare to hurt him anymore, Dong Fein opens his eyes in shock. The guy shouts at her not to be stupid and to leave quickly, the girl turns to Dung Fana in alarm. Shao Jie's eyes glow scarlet, he runs in rage and shouts that now they will both die from his blow and it will be even easier this way. Dina clings to Dong Fein's chest, he hugs her back, there are blood stains on his sleeve. Shao Jia attacks the hugging couple with his baton, Dina shouts that she will definitely protect her Dong Fein. A beam of golden energy hits the heavens, she promises to take revenge on anyone who offends Dong Fein. The commissioner's eyes widen, a bead of sweat runs down his face, he asks what's going on. A giant beam of golden energy appears among the skyscrapers and pierces the clouds. Shao Jia hits the barrier with his fists, he shakes with rage and the recoil of the force of his own attacks. Dina hugged Dong Fein, maintaining a golden-colored barrier over the two of them for protection. Shao Jia says that his divine weapon is missing and he doesn't understand what she did, he notices that the barrier under his hand begins to expand, he presses, trying to contain its power. Shao Jia shouts that this is impossible and he cannot believe it, he tries to use divine suppression, but the barrier only pushes him back. The girl with green hair watches what is happening indifferently, she doesn't understand how this is possible. Only divine weapons with a huge difference in energy level can completely suppress the power of the second. The girl screams for her and Shao Jia to retreat immediately, the beam begins to gradually subside, decreasing in scale. Soon, the beam of golden energy subsides completely as it reaches the ground, there is devastation and clouds of dust all around. Dong Fein was speechless, he opened his eyes in surprise and almost touched Dina, who was lying on his chest. Dong Fein anxiously tries to help Dina wake up by shaking her shoulders, behind them there is a dark figure in the sky. It turns out to be a drone, he hovers in the air above the building and watches Dong Fein, who is trying to bring Dina to her senses. The drone's lens glows blue, from the robot speaker comes the words that this is incredible. The chief of staff looks at the screen in surprise, he realizes that Dong Fein has summoned a living divine weapon. He sits back contentedly and smiles, admitting that it was worth seeing. Someone stirs a drink in a cup, the man says that they should not be released, because unstudied things without observation usually bring a lot of trouble. The man takes a sip from the cup and says that even the fate of humanity may be at risk. The head asks them to observe more changes, because there is a chance that the unknown will bring them pleasant surprises. The weather is wonderful and the sky is blue, Dong Fein curses the scoundrels from the suppression committee. Dong Fein examines the hole in his t-shirt, he laments that the mentally retarded have caused him problems. Dong Fein angrily clutches his t-shirt and asks the gods not to meet them again. Dong Fein looks at Dina through the hole in her t-shirt, he never thought that she would save him. He lowers his t-shirt and looks excitedly at the sleeping Dina, he doesn't understand who she really is. He looks up at the ceiling and remembers that only an object can be a divine weapon. He understands that Dina is not only human-like, but also hides many abilities. Dina frowns and sweats in her sleep, she's clearly having a nightmare, she mutters that she doesn't like it. She presses her hands to herself and mutters that no one should be harmed by Dong Fein, she desperately turns her head in her sleep. Dong Fein blushes at her confession in the dream, Dina mutters that no one ever gave her anything to eat and Dong Fein instantly wilts. 
he glances at her with determination and grits his teeth, he decides that, no matter what, he must find out everything about her. Dina opens her eyes, waking up, Dong Fein greets her, Dina rubs her eyes and doesn't understand what's happening. Dong Fein hunches over next to the table and says that she hasn't eaten anything all day and is probably terribly hungry. The girl's eyes light up and she even shudders in surprise at what she sees. Dong Fein moves away from the table and says that he prepared very expensive instant noodles especially for her. He says that this is her favorite taste, and he also added various additives inside, Dina greedily reaches her hands towards the plate of noodles. Dong Fein wraps his arm around her, the girl stops with surprise on her face and drool flowing from her mouth. Dong Fein demands that she tell him who she is, Dina tells him to just let her eat these luxurious noodles. She reaches her hand towards the plate, almost touching it with her fingertips, but Dong Fein holds it tightly. Dong Fein holds her tightly and says that no one has a divine weapon like her. Dong Fein says that he doesn't know anything about her at all and she won't eat until they figure everything out. The girl mumbles about how she wants those noodles, her hand trembles from the effort of getting closer to the plate. Dong Fein looks at her and tells her to answer how she changes her hair color from pink to wheat and about the great sword. The girl freezes, opening her eyes, Dong Fein asks how she stopped those scoundrels from the committee. The girl's eyes become empty and she mutters that she won't be able to hold back any longer. She cries and bites Dong Fein's hand, he yelps in pain. Dong Fein screams that he is hurt and tries to throw her off, Dina grabbed her hand, closed her eyes and didn't let go. Dong Fein asks Dina not to pretend to be a fool, because they must fight together, they are partners, but he doesn't know about her at all. Dina says that she is not deceiving and really does not understand what he means, she says that today she just wanted to protect him. Dong Fein looks away excitedly, he says that if she is telling the truth, then she can start eating. He looks at the empty noodle bowl, suddenly realizing that it is already empty. Dina burps and sinks to the floor, she praises Dong Fein that it was very tasty. Dina frowns and looks away, she says that she also doesn't know how this happens to her and for what reason. She doesn't remember her words, she says that she lost consciousness and does not remember what happened after the commissioner was hit, Dong Fein accepts her answer. Dina says that she speaks honestly and does not deceive, Dong Fein comes into the room and says that he is tired and says good night. Dina tries to call him, but Dong Fein hangs his head and refuses to answer her. Dina asks if it really doesn't look like the kind of weapon he would want. She says that she will become the perfect divine weapon and make him happy, a vortex of golden energy appears around her. Dong Fein asks what she is talking about, Tina shouts that she will be the weapon he will be happy with. Dong Fein asks in surprise if Dina can turn into a real divine weapon. Dina stretches and says that maybe she just doesn't want to turn into an ugly person. A golden divine seal appears on her pupil, she says she doesn't want to see Dong Fein upset. She arches her back, golden energy begins to flow out of it and Dong Fein is forced to shield his hands from the light and flow of energy. Dong Fein recognizes the divine radiance and admits that he could not think that Dina could turn into a real divine weapon. Dang Fana wonders what she will turn into, he assumes that this must be the same great sword. He rejoices that from now on he also owns a divine weapon, but suddenly everything calms down and the steam dissipates. Dong Fein moves closer to where Dina stood, pieces of her clothing fall to the ground. Dong Fein looks at Dina's clothes lying on the floor and does not understand where his great sword is. He leans closer and peers at the objects on the floor, he decides to search through the clothes. He suggests that the sword may be hidden under clothing, he reaches for the handle, which sticks out from under the fabric. He rests his hand on the floor and feels the handle under the fabric with his palm, suddenly something begins to tremble under the fabric. Dong Fein throws both hands on the fabric and orders Dina to stop hiding, suddenly he catches some movement out of the corner of his eye. He quickly feels the fabric, trying to catch the object underneath, he shouts that he will catch her sooner or later. He dives his hand under the snow-white fabric and catches the weapon that Dinah has turned into. He triumphantly lifts the cloth and shouts that Dina will never hide from him. His hand grasps an incomprehensible object, Dina says that she is very cool and successfully transformed the first time. Dong Fein picks up the divine weapon and says that it reminds him of something, Dina confirms this. She says she turned into Mr. Wang's signature barbecue balls, Dong Fein looks completely defeated. He throws the divine weapon in the trash and asks Dina to pretend they don't know each other. 
Dina holds Dongfeng's shirt and asks why he is still unhappy if she has transformed. Dongfeng shouts that he won't fight with barbecue balls, Dina replies that you can't judge a book by its cover. Dongfeng frowns, because he knows that summoning weapons can bring absolutely crazy items. He leans towards her and asks if she's lying, Dina replies that she is actually very useful in battle. Dongfeng takes the divine item in his hand and admits that it looks very awkward. Dongfeng decides to try out the divine item on the wall, he hits the wall with barbecue balls. Dina spits out the blood and says it hurt, Dongfeng looks disappointed. Dina says that it was very painful and if it happens again, she might die. Dongfeng is furious and cannot believe that he got such a cool divine weapon. Dina tells him not to worry, because she can still transform, Dongfeng twirls it in his hand. He asks in disbelief what else she can turn into, she asks him to give her a minute to think. She concentrates and moves in his hand, Dongfeng pays attention to the balls appearing at the tips of the tips. She happily demonstrates that she now has four barbecue balls, Dongfeng looks defeated. Dina looks pleased with herself and asks how much Dangfana likes it and if he is impressed with her abilities. Dongfeng doesn't believe he's being asked this, Dina asks him to wait and see what else she can do. Suddenly a duck emerges from it with a hatchet in its head, the duck quacks, greatly surprising Dongfeng. More and more items appear from Dina, such as donut, radish, ham, sandwich, noodles, baguette and the like. From Dina comes stewed fish, roast suckling pig, hamburgers, and croissant, all the food is poured towards Dongfeng. Fried fish falls on Dongfeng's face, all the juice and fat from it floats down his face. Dongfeng, with a fishy face, asks her to stop, Dina is afraid of his anger and stops creating food. Suddenly all the food stops steaming, Dina jumps off the floor and hides under the blanket on the sofa, she says he is very rude. She stirs under the blanket and says that she tried very hard to please him, but he doesn't appreciate her at all. Dina turns into her human form, peeks out from under the blanket and says that Dongfeng is terrible. Dongfeng closes his eyes and frowns, he asks himself what else he could expect from such a glutton. Dongfeng asks her not to turn into this in the future, Dina replies that she followed his desire to obtain the divine weapon. Although the weapons bestowed by the goddess can take different forms, they are usually real weapons useful in battle, and not at all a toy. Dongfeng tells Dina to get up and prepare the equipment for the trial, Dina replies that she is naked now. Dina covers herself with a blanket and says that her clothes were left on the floor, Dongfeng looks back at her white clothes. Dina asks why Dongfeng doesn't want this, the guy replies that she is talking nonsense, so that she does not come closer and lets him go. Two ladybugs are sitting on the road along which thick grass grows, suddenly something attracts your attention. The beetles leave only a wet trail on the dusty road, the boot prints are removed. Someone whines that the charge on the phone has run out and complete boredom has set in, the blue screen shows that the battery is almost empty. A man with sideburns is carrying a huge backpack, someone sits on the backpack and asks when they will be there and throws the phone at him. May is sitting on the backpack and says that they didn't work that hard to be as tired as he says, the man replies that he is the only one working. May looks down at him and says that she is happy with the way things are and asks why he is unhappy. She throws an empty water flask at him, the man tells her that she has the right to think so, but he will simply do what is best. May asks if Dongfeng can really handle it on his own, the man asks if she is worried. The sideburned man humbly reminds her that Dongfeng is already an adult. The girl looks at him worriedly and agrees that Dongfeng is an adult and it's time for him to take responsibility. The man carries a backpack and offers to simply do their job to the best of their ability, as always, May replies that it pisses her off. She mutters that everything pisses her off, she jumps off the backpack and says that now they will calm down what is causing them trouble. The girl says that she will try not to tease him, she takes out her divine weapon. The man tells her that this is a creature of a special rank and grins as he continues to carry a huge backpack. The girl looks up at the huge monster, she promises to finish off the worm quickly, the man throws off his backpack and summons his weapon. Every student who has received a divine weapon must pass a test before they can be called a true warrior. Tests are conducted annually for students, this is not only a way to become a glorious warrior, but also to experience all the horrors of the world. The four travelers look around warily, the girl with purple hair says there is something here. The guy grabs the two-handed sword more tightly, 
his hands tremble in fear of what they might encounter. Someone asks you not to talk nonsense, another person gets into position and prays to the goddess that they are not dolls. A guy with a two-handed sword cuts the air twice and shouts that his weapon is ready to bleed the dolls. Something drags the guy into the bushes, blood-covered tentacles emerge from the bushes, the guy with blue hair notices this. The guy looks up and realizes that something is hunting them. Someone is screaming for help, the girl with a spear looks up. The monster drags her up a tree, her comrade in arms looks at her helplessly while some red creature rushes towards him. The guy with blue hair jumps back, dodging the creature's attack. He desperately inhales air from the pain of the creature piercing his chest. His mangled leg falls to the ground, his pant leg and shoes covered in blood. Scarlet creatures are getting closer to the bodies of the dead, the last guy standing trembles and realizes that everyone is dead. His shoulders are trembling, and there is an expression of utter horror on his face, he timidly turns his gaze to the ground next to him. The red creatures noticed him and began to crawl closer. The guy runs away from the creatures and screams to be left alone. He shouts that he is no longer a divine weapon warrior and only wants to return home. The guy continues to run until he reaches the edge of the forest. A red shoot appears from the bushes, scaring the guy, he screams, but the appendage hits him. The guy lies on the ground and wheezes for someone to help him, tears flow from his eyes, a red paw with sharp claws appears next to him. The creature opens its huge mouth with endless rows of sharp teeth and growls at the guy. This is the test video that Dong Fein will get from the black market, he asks Dina to look more carefully. The girl looked away at the ceiling and slurped, there is a pleased blush on her cheeks. She folded her legs cross-legged and was gnawing on a piece of bread, she assures Dong Fein that she is watching very carefully. Dong Fein snatches the bread from her hands and asks if she can learn anything else besides eating food. Dong Fein says that this is a real test and they may well die there, he asks why she finds it difficult to understand. Dina frowns and chews bread, she says that Dong Fein can't just die. Dina says that she can turn into barbecue balls on a steel fork and help Dong Fein out. The guy chews bread doomedly and says that he has an idea how she can save him. He looks at her and yells at her not to even think about turning into this. The girl sits on the sofa with a blank look and says that Dong Fein is always angry with everyone. She looks at the red monster on the screen and realizes that this is the dark doll, she thinks that the doll is not only scary, but also ugly. Someone shows others what testing looks like, viewers agree that it looks very cruel, the academy hides this with all its might. A man sits on a pile of rubble with a screen under his arm, his name is Rama and someone asks if he called them just to scare them. Red hair says that considering the power of the guns, they deserve to be killed, they were unable to kill the dark dolls. Rama replies that this test is extremely dangerous and he thinks that working as a team is the only way to survive. The guy with purple hair says that their squad has not been updated for a long time and asks to find a member for them, the girl talks about those who survived. Rama replies that they should not refuse so quickly, because even though he does not have great fighting ability, he has survived two trials. If they allow him to join their team, he will ensure that they receive the highest reward for the challenge. He says they will get the Evangelion stone, all three team members look at him in shock. Rama gets up from his seat, the stone is a gift from the goddess, the highest reward a warrior of divine weapons can receive. When you have it, life becomes better than ever, although their trio is already strong, Rama suggests not to give up the chance. Even the strongest among the disciples would not be able to obtain the Evangelion stone without his help. Rama says he is just using their power to pass the test, Trinity replies that his words make sense. Rama smiles, a scar crossing his eye, collaboration of this kind will benefit everyone involved, he asks them to think about his proposal. The leader of the trio replies that they can get the stone without his help and that he simply wasted their time, they send him away. Dina asks why they came here, Dong Fein notices that the hieroglyphs on the door are misspelled. Dong Fein says that this is his Aunt May's preparation room and suggests they go downstairs to look for something to test. He starts going down the stairs, Dina asks if her barbecue balls aren't enough. Dong Fein tells her to be careful, because he doesn't know what danger the two's room holds. Dina had no idea that the house had such a large basement, she asks what it is used for. Dong Fein replies that the two guard their secrets very jealously, he takes his sword out of its sheath. Dong Fein takes another sword from the wall and says that they like to have fun and don't like to work, 
in addition, both have a bad character. Dong Fein puts the weapons in his bag and says that they love drinking and fighting and don't take anything seriously. Dong Fein stands in front of the huge armor and asks Dina to bring him all the weapons she sees. Dina goes up the stairs and agrees. Suddenly her foot slips off the rung of the stairs, she screams and starts falling down. She falls, clutching the ladder and screams for Dong Fein to help her. A crash is heard, Dong Fein looks around in surprise. Dina says the ladder suddenly fell, Dong Fein shouts that she is stupid. Dina hands him a grenade, she says she found it on the shelf and really liked it, Dong Fein notices that the fuse is lit. He screams for her to give it to him immediately and snatches the grenade from her hands. Dong Fein blows out the fuse of the grenade and sighs with relief that it was close. Dong Fein says they just almost exploded, Dina calls him greedy, Dong Fein asks her not to touch his aunt's toys. Dina says the grenade looks cool and cute, Dong Fein tells her not to touch the grenade anymore. Dina looks at the grenade and then looks at something else. She notices a bag filled with weapons, Dong Fein notices something in front of him. The girl raises her hand and offers to go have lunch, Dong Fein asks her to wait. Dong Fein says that she cannot go to the test like this and suggests looking for clothes in his aunt's wardrobe. Dong Fein enters the password on the door and it opens, Dina enthusiastically agrees with the guy. He tells her to choose for herself, to take a closer look, maybe she already liked something, the girl looks around in confusion. Dina blushes and says that these clothes are foreign and she is not sure that she can touch them. Dong Fein says not to make excuses because she needs to change her clothes. He says that if she cannot choose clothes for herself, then he will choose clothes for her. Dina says that she didn't refuse to change her clothes, that Dong Fein is really harmful. Dong Fein blushes and frowns, he says that his aunt is really a pervert. He looks at various erotic lingerie and doesn't understand how she can wear it, suddenly something catches his eye. He looks up and sees a set that will suit Dina, Dina shyly approaches him and asks if she needs to wear it. Dong Fein shouts for Dina to completely change her clothes, because she can't be seen in her old dress. He shouts at her to be sure to put her hair up, because it can get in her way. Dina finishes getting dressed and puts her hair in a ponytail, holding an elastic band in her teeth. Dong Fein, in his battle uniform, knocks on her room and asks if she is ready and why it is taking her so long. Dina looks at herself in the mirror and asks her to wait, because she thinks she looks strange. Dong Fein bursts into her room and shouts that she has been getting dressed for half a day. Dina blushes and looks at him, she asks if she dressed correctly, she says she's a little ashamed. Dong Fein shouts that she should be ashamed of the amount of time she wasted and says that they should go. A white dove flies across the blue sky and lands on a flagpole, a purple flag flutters underneath it. Students participating in the test are preparing to go onto the playground, many people flock to the arch. The participants are excited about the upcoming challenge, everyone is perplexed as to why so many people are here, until they notice that even second-year students have come, the monsters are very ferocious and people die every year. Dong Fein taps the screen to register for the challenge. The information on the application form states that the participant's name is Dong Fein, he is 16 years old and a third-year student at Nandu High School. His student ID card with a photograph and school seal is displayed on the screen. The profile states that his weapon is Dina, an unknown human-type form. Several disciples look over upon hearing Dong Fein's name. Dong Fein turns pale and pulls Dina along with him, he says they need to hurry, the students notice Dong Fein. The students gather on a platform surrounded by columns. The columns and platform are made of white stone and are located on an elevated rock. The director is watching everything from the balcony, he's looking forward to another year of challenges, he doesn't know at all what to expect from the guys this year. He frowns and wonders how many of them will survive to the end of the test. The figure in the shadows says that it's time to get used to this, because this is the next step for them on the path to becoming a warrior of the divine weapon. The director says they are too young for that, the figure tells him to watch his tongue as it is their sacred duty. The woman says that death is inevitable for everyone because some will die of old age, and some will die on the battlefield and they should not be sad and regretful. The woman tells the principal to boost the student's morale, he just smiles sadly, clutching the microphone in his hand. The director's face appears on the screen, he says that today is the day of the test and greets everyone present. He loudly announces that today marks the end of their student life and the beginning of their military career. They paid for this day with sweat, 
blood and painful training and that is why he is proud of them. The director asks to remember that they are warriors of the goddess and prays that the goddess will bless them for centuries and wishes everyone good luck. The students complain that the principal talks too much and eagerly waits for the gate to open, Dong Fein says it's time for them to go too. The gate opens, Dina asks if the test will take place here, they look at the picturesque landscape. She laughs and says that it is very beautiful here, she says that there are forests, hills, and a lake here, and she would really like to have a picnic here. Dong Fein shouts that this place is full of dangers and tells her not to run far. The girl runs to the lake, to the thick greenery, to the bright flowers, she admires everything. The girl falls to her knees next to the flowers and shouts that these flowers are very beautiful and smell very nice. Suddenly something catches her attention. Among the flowers she notices a human skull and immediately turns pale. She rushes back to Dong Fana up the steps and shouts that she found terrible bones. Behind Dong Fein is a silhouette, highlighted by the sun from behind. The students walk down the huge steps, Dina runs to Dong Fana and shouts that she is scared. She calls out to Dong Fein, but a man named Rama frowns and pushes her out of the way, saying that she is very noisy. Dina falls on her back and closes her eyes, Rama turns his back to her and leaves, Dunfein notices this and hurries to Dina. He helps her up and shouts that the man behaved like a bastard. Rama doesn't even turn around and just moves on, grunting. Dongfein screams for the man to apologize to her, but suddenly a beam of golden energy flashes near his cheek. Rama stands with a gun in his hand and says that he knows that the guy's name is Dongfein, the hero is bleeding on his cheek. Rama asks how the scum without a divine weapon was going to force him to apologize. He advises Dangfana to think better about how he is going to survive, the guy frowns upon hearing his words. Only students from the southern capital have access to the test, and three are denied entry. Shao Jia grits his teeth and asks what the gatekeeper told him. The guy shouts that they are commissars for suppression and must be allowed inside, the girl says that they have the necessary qualifications. Shao Jia says that they are also still students and must be allowed through, the gatekeeper doesn't know what to tell them. The girl says that the committee represents the glory of the goddess and they have no right not to be allowed inside. The gatekeeper is sweating and nervous, he hesitates and decides to let them inside. Dong Fein tells Dina to repeat what he told her, she replies that the test is very dangerous and she needs to obey him. Dong Fein says that one must always be on the alert and not run away, Dina follows him and chews chips. The guy goes further and says that the test is a dangerous game in which there is every chance of death, Dina gets distracted by something in the bushes. Dina bends down to pick up something in the bushes, Dong Fein asks if she understood everything. He frowns and looks around, Dina found some kind of skull and put it on her head, she asks if it suits her. Dong Fein asks in shock what level of intelligence she has to do such a thing. She removes the skull from her head and says that they have come a lot, but still have not encountered any danger. Dong Fein shouts that while she waits for danger, you will already have time to die. Dina says that if there is no danger in sight, then there is no need to worry, Dong Fein tells her to stay close to him. Dina shouts that she sees a beautiful bird, Dong Fein yells at her not to come near her. A flock of birds takes to the air, Dong Fein flinches when he notices them, he widens his eyes, recognizing the sound. He tells Dina to wait below, and he himself is going to look around from the height of the tree. He disappears into the foliage and emerges above, he takes out a telescope and tries to look around. He looks in the direction where the sound came from, he sees a column of dust in the distance. He flinches, suddenly noticing something through the telescope. Through the pipe you can see a huge snake and a student with a long stick, Dong Fein realizes that it is a doll of darkness. The student with the stick screams and flies straight into the monster's mouth, full of sharp teeth. The student blocks the monster's jaws with his stick and tells him to die. The blonde closes his eyes and sees how his stick begins to break. The doll of darkness dives down, breaking the disciple's divine weapon, the blonde screams for help. Dong Fein realizes that he has been eaten, there seem to be dolls of darkness in this area. Dong Fein comes down from the tree and says it's time for them to leave, Dina sits by a tree and hums. A snake crawls around a tree, she approaches Dina while she gets her food. Dong Fein lands and crushes the snake, Dina only manages to scream in surprise. Dong Fein grumbles that it is not only the dolls of darkness that pose a danger on the battlefield. Dina thanks him for saving her, Dong Fein asks what she is holding in her hand. 
The girl looks away and says it's nothing special, she hides the object behind her back. Dong Fein is wary, but does not continue to insist, he says it's time for them to leave here. The girl clutches the Evangelion camel in her hand and giggles. They go out into a clearing and Dong Fein suggests they rest for a while, Dina asks if it's safe here. Dong Fein smiles and says that it is safer here than in the forest, the girl widens her eyes, but agrees. A girl with bulging eyes points to the side and says that she sees a huge monster in front of them. Dunfane turns warily towards the clearing, trying to make out the monster, but in front of them is an open field with short grass. Dongfane laughs and asks where she saw the big monster, he believes that she has problems not only with her head, but also with her vision. He didn't think she was such a coward and a dreamer, the girl is offended and says that there really is a monster there. Dong Fein runs forward and tells her not to stand like a pillar and not to lag behind, Dina shudders. Dong Fein smiles and invites her to relax with him, Dina screams with horror on her face to be careful. Dong Fein asks why she was scared, behind him, a huge monster emerges from the ground. The guy throws his head up and notices the slobbering mouth above him. The monster looms over him and opens its mouth wide, preparing to swallow him. The monster attacks with its claws, Dong Fein manages to jump away from the blow. Dong Fein has difficulty maintaining his balance, Dina shouts that it is a doll of darkness. The guy frowns and says that he was expecting similar monsters here, Dina tells him to run away. Dong Fein deftly dodges the monster's blows, getting closer to it, he carries a sword in his hand, he pushes off the monster's shell with his foot, he raises his sword in flight and prepares to hit the doll of darkness with his weapon. Dong Fein lands next to the monster, cutting off two of its limbs. He shouts that his name is Dong Fein and he is a divine weapon warrior. He attacks the monster again, but the blade of his sword breaks in two. Dong Fein looks at his reflection in the blade of the sword and turns pale. He looks at his broken sword and thinks about how he should fight further, the monster turns to hit back. The monster hits him and Dong Fein throws him away like a toy. Dina calls out to Dong Fein, he falls to the ground and screams that it hurt. Dong Fein assumed that only divine weapons could deal with the doll of darkness. Dong Fein notices that he left a wound on the monster, scarlet steam appears from the wound. Dong Fein remembers his bag with weapons and says that the monster will continue to be hurt in any case. The doll of darkness attacks Dong Fang again, the guy frowns and prepares to attack back. He reaches for his backpack and tugs at the clasps, he decides that he urgently needs to choose some kind of weapon. Dunfane grabs the first heap of weapons he comes across, he asks who will last longer. Dongfane asks the monster who will last longer, the monster's thick skin or his countless weapons. Dongfane hits the monster's shell with a shout, sparks from the impact fly in all directions. Dongfane strikes again with such force that part of the sword blade breaks off, clouds of dust fill the air. Dongfane curses and looks at his scratched palm, he is forced to let go of the hilt of the broken sword. The monster does not lose its chance and attacks, his limb breaks through the ground where the hero stood, stones fly in all directions, Dong Fein managed to jump back. Dong Fein reaches for the hilt of the long sword, he realizes that he still has not injured the doll of darkness. The monster attacks again, but misses, Dong Fein jumps back, sword clutched in his hand. He cuts the air with his sword and shouts for the monster to taste his steel. Dong Fein's sword cuts one of the tentacles under the monster's muzzle, causing it to roar. Dina clenches her fist and is glad that Dong Fein succeeded, she shouts that he will definitely cope. Suddenly, a severed tentacle of a monster flies near her, it lands on the ground with a wet sound, and the girl's smile drops. The tentacle continues to squirm, Dina turns pale and looks at him, she says it's disgusting. She pushes the severed tentacle of the monster away from her with her foot and watches where it flew. Dina turns around to see the fight, she watches the silhouettes in the heat of battle and shouts that Dong Fein will definitely cope. Dong Fein grits his teeth with effort, he presses down on the sword to drive it deeper into the monster, splashes of blood fly towards him. Dong Fein jumps up and swings with all his might, he hits the monster through a hole in its shell, blood begins to flow from the monster's wound. Dong Fein lands, following him, pieces of shell fall to the ground, Dong Fein understands that everyone has weaknesses. He looks back at the monster warily and leans over his bag, he understands that his weapons are ineffective. Blood is gushing out from the monster's wound, Dong Fein decides to hit the same spot all the time to increase his chances of winning. Dong Fein believes that with enough effort, 
he can win, Dina opens a bag of chips. Dong Fein strikes with precision with his sword, hitting the monster again and again, he damages the shell of the evil doll more and more. Dina watches him contentedly and chews chips, she decides that Dong Fein is an ideal man and even such an evil doll of darkness does not matter to him. Dong Fein strikes again and screams for the monster to finally die, his blow throws the monster back. Dong Fein frowns and looks at the monster, the monster has no eyes, but it clenches its jaws, hidden between its tentacles. The monster rears up and hits Dong Fein with its head, the guy is thrown back, he screams in pain. Dina shouts for Dong Fein to quickly destroy this monster, she is chewing something and choking, trying to clear her throat. Dong Fein flies on the ground, the monster digs in the ground, Dina says that nothing bad happened and that Dong Fein should not give up. Dong Fein tries to remember her aunt's words about what to do if the doll's surface is protected and there is no divine weapon. The monster raises its snout and roars towards Dong Fein, suddenly a lump of garbage flies into his face, Dina yells at him to shut up. Dina shouts angrily that the monster already looks disgusting and disgusting, and he also beat Dong Fein. The girl clenches her fist and furiously screams for the monster to get out of their sight. The monster's eyes sparkle and its mouth opens, he rushes towards Dina, who screams for Dong Fein to save her. The girl bends her knees and covers her head with her hands, she starts crying and screams to be saved. Dong Fein runs towards her and shouts for her to hide quickly, he notices something ahead of him. Dong Fein prepares his sword and runs towards the monster, he decides to break through the monster's shell at all costs. Dong Fein stands in front of the crying Dina and points his sword at the monster, there is determination on his face. Blood spatters into the air, the monster's giant, sharp limb looms over Dina, blood flows down the limb. Dina calls out to Dong Fein, still sitting in a protective position, Dong Fein gritted his teeth and puffed with tension. He plunges a sword into the monster's face and says that his skin is by no means impenetrable, Dong Fein's face is covered in drops of blood. He lowers his sword, cutting the monster, he says that even without a divine weapon, he is capable of killing him. The monster lets out a dying cry, he falls onto his side, spraying blood all over the area. Dong Fein sits down and leans against Dina's back, he sighs and says that he is very tired. He looks at the meadow in front of him and says that in order to kill this doll of darkness he had to break all their weapons. Fragments of swords and spears lie among the green grass, which is swayed by the wind. Dong Fein frowns and realizes that, without the divine weapon, their next encounter with the doll of darkness will end in their death. Dina looks at him and says that he should have believed her from the very beginning. Dong Fein asks how she was able to sense the monster, Dina replies that his body gives off a terrible odor that cannot be ignored. Dong Fein is shocked that she can discover the darkness dolls, suddenly Dina becomes alert and says that something is coming. Dong Fein is startled by some noise next to them, Dina says they need to get out of here quickly. Next to them, more dolls of darkness appear from the ground, Dong Fein jumps up and asks why she didn't tell earlier. The monster's eyes glow red, and its body is covered in the same protection as the body of the defeated monster. Dong Fein turns and asks why Dina didn't notice them earlier, since she has such a wonderful nose. Dina says that he didn't believe in her and that made her angry, they are surrounded by monsters on all sides. The grey-haired girl notices that they are in trouble and summons a divine weapon to save them. Dong Fein turns around at her voice and tries to make out the person who is summoning the weapon. The girl screams for them to duck, a huge will cuts through the air over the meadow, mowing down the leaves of the grass. The wheel hits all monsters in turn, Dong Fein and Dina close their eyes to protect themselves from the wind and dust. Pieces of bodies fall like monsters to the ground, raising even more dust, the wheel bounces off the ground and flies upward. The girl jumps up and deftly catches her divine weapon in the air with one hand. She wraps both hands around the bar inside the wheel. The girl jumps over the monster, spinning the wheel in her hands, the monster raises its face upward. The girl rushes along the monster's back and delivers a series of blows with her wheel. The girl lands and exhales tiredly, her eyebrows are furrowed and her gaze is full of determination, Dong Fein is speechless. Dina whispers that this little sister is very cool, Dong Fein nods in agreement, he turns to the girl and thanks her. The body of a defeated monster falls next to the girl, she recalls the divine weapon. Dong Fein tries to find out who she is but the girl looks at him arrogantly and shouts at him not to talk to her. Behind his back, 
Dongfeng and Dina don't understand why she saved them and now doesn't want to talk. The girl calls his name and looks away with displeasure. She says she knows he insulted the goddess, Dongfeng opened his mouth in surprise. Dunfeng peers into the girl's face and recognizes her as Fry, Dina looks at him and asks if they know each other. The girl looks at Dongfeng and Dina detachedly, he says she is the brightest star of the academy. Fry is a talented warrior, an excellent student, and also the granddaughter of the director himself. Dongfeng admits that he never thought that she would want to save him, the girl frowns and looks at the guy. Fry says that if she had known that he was the one in trouble, she would not have saved him, she clenches her hand with the purple seal. Dongfeng says that no matter what, he is very grateful for the rescue, Dina sulks at the girl for her words. Fry frowns and looks down, she says there is no need to thank her. She says that they were just lucky and says goodbye, Dongfeng calls her harmful. Fry advises Dunfana that if he goes deeper into the testing field, the dolls of darkness become stronger. If she were in his place, namely a disciple without a divine weapon, she would never have gone further. She says the best he can do is go back to the beginning and save his life. Dongfeng says this may be the best option, Dina pouts and asks why they talk like she's useless. Dina pulls Dongfeng's sleeve and says that she will protect him, she gets angry and Dongfeng asks her to calm down. Fry is amazed and concerned, because Dunfana managed to kill the Doll of Darkness with ordinary weapons. The night is coming, a growing crescent moon and bright stars appear in the sky, they illuminate the clouds from behind. From the very morning, the battles of other students for a reward or survival unfold. A tentacled creature drags one student into the foliage, he asks for help, another is horrified that monsters even live in trees. Countless amounts of blood were spilled on the testing field on the way to the testing tower, those who get there are called warriors. Dunfane turns pale and calls out to Dina, he tells her not to rush, because the meat is not ready yet. The girl pokes a huge ham with a stick and says that she can't wait any longer and is in great pain. She says that food is the best part of life and she has always considered food to be her best friend. Dina leans too close to the fire and a lock of hair near her face catches fire. Dina screams that her hair is on fire, Dongfeng replies that her best friend just betrayed her. Several days have passed and they have not met a single doll of darkness, Dina, meanwhile, behaves as usual. Dongfeng hands the meat to Dina and tells her to eat, because it is cooked, Dina crashes into the meat and hits her chin on it. She bites into the meat and blushes with satisfaction, her eyes sparkle with pleasure. All they do all the time is satisfy their needs, Dongfeng doesn't understand whether the trial is still ongoing. Dina clings to him and squeezes him tightly in her arms, Dongfeng exhales from the strength of her grip. Their fourth day of testing came to an end, they met and killed one doll but ate a whopping 24 times. Dina says that she likes such a test, she promises that she will be useful, unlike the girl who can be dangerous. Dunfane frowns and asks how Fry could be dangerous, Dina, meanwhile, had already fallen asleep on his chest. Dongfane yawns and displeasedly notices that while he is sleeping here, others are fighting with dolls throughout the territory. Fry stands on one leg and spins his weapon in his hand, the monster's severed head flies into the air. The girl frowns and spins the weapon behind her back, she doesn't understand why everything is happening this way. Her divine weapon blows the monster's head off and returns straight to her hands, she asks why there are so many dark dolls suddenly. She is covered in blood, but hears something approaching her, she turns around and sees a huge monster bursting out of the ground. The monster closes its mouth and hits him, suddenly, for the monster, energy begins to ooze from its mouth. Fry sighs tiredly and frowns, she is covered from head to toe in monster drool. She leans on the crossbar of her wheel and sinks, she says her body is very tired of fighting. She leans on the ground with a wet hand and says that this is her limit, she crawls out of the monster's mouth and wonders why they are all attacking her. The girl dusts off her wheel and says that there is something wrong with it. Suddenly, two more dolls of darkness appear from the forest, they rush towards the girl, opening their mouths wide. The girl whispers tiredly that today she has every chance of dying, her face is covered in scratches and her hair is wet with saliva. Dust rises into the air on the rock, a crash and roar is heard, a small figure of a girl falls from a cliff. The frame stands on another ledge above the raging streams of water, he laughs, pleased with his efforts. Rama says that for the rest it's all over and the main characters of the competition will clearly not be them. 
He looks with the others at the splash that Fry created, Rama says she gets zero points for this landing. The other guys look at Ram warily and ask if this will get them in trouble. Students are not only warriors of the goddess, but also children of the strongest families, and if someone finds out about this, they will not be happy. Rama says that a lot of people die every year, so no one will notice, he says they better pay attention to the advantage they've gained. The Evangelion stone is a treasure that can change fate and anyone who tries to take it from Ram will regret it. Frey's body is carried away by the raging waves of a mountain river, she lost consciousness and limply submitted to the force of the elements. Someone is calling Dongfein, he can hardly open his eyes, he rubs his eyelids and calls out to Dina, the fire next to him burns brightly. Dina calls Dongfein and tells him to quickly come to her, he notices her clothes on a bush next to him. Dongfein winces and asks what happened to her, his eyes are wide with fear. Dina calls him to come to her quickly, her face is wet but calm. Dongfein grabs her clothes and runs to where he hears the voice, he asks why she is calling him. He looks into the bushes and asks what happened, white panties fall onto his face, Dina giggles and looks over her shoulder at him. A couple of leaves got tangled in Dongfein's hair, he takes the panties off the branch and asks what they are. Dina tells him to hang them up, she hugs herself by the shoulders, her skin covered in water, Dongfein turns his gaze to her. Dongfein clutches her clothes in his hands and stammers, Dina says that she found the river herself and invites them to swim together. Dina asks why he froze in place and invites him to come down to her, Dongfein blushed and looked at her. Dongfein turns pale, trembles and says that they are on a test, Dina answers that she knows, she runs her hand through her hair. She says that she hasn't bathed for so long that there's already an unpleasant smell. Dina runs her hand along her neck and tells Dongfein to quickly come down to her, and she will rub his back. Dina closes one eye in pleasure, a man ends up in the water, face down. Dongfein points to the man and asks who it is, Dina looks at the man behind her. Dina says that this is that arrogant girl and she has been swimming here for a long time, Fry flips over on the waves face up. Dongfein freezes in place, he calmly asks how long she has been bathing. Dunfein snatches Fry out of the water and shouts to Dina that a person is drowning next to her, and she still didn't understand it. Dongfein puts the girl on the ground, he realizes that she is still breathing. The guy turns around and asks if Dina knows how to do artificial respiration and cardiac massage. Dina frowns and says that she will not save the girl who spoke so rudely to him. His hand trembles and trembles and he decides to bring the girl to her senses on his own, and Dina will dry her clothes. He presses down on Frey's chest with his hands until she coughs up the water that was in her lungs. Water from her lungs hits Dongfein's face and he tries to dodge and close his eyes. The girl clears her throat and opens her eyes. She gets up and asks where she is, Dongfein asks if she woke up. She realizes who is in front of her and immediately comes to her senses, noticing his hands on her chest. She clenches her teeth and asks what he allows himself to do. Dong Fein says that he gave her a cardiac massage and she shouldn't thank him, the girl didn't mean thanks. She says he took advantage of her unconscious state and calls her a pervert. She aims her fist at his face, but misses, Dong Fein smiles and doesn't understand what happened. Dina looks back at the noise and sees Fry on Dong Fang, she screams for Fry to let him go to Dun Fein, he says she is furious. The girl lies exhausted on Dong Fein's chest and asks what happened to her body and her strength. She calls Dongfein a freak, he is perplexed by her actions. The girl stands barefoot on the ground and trembles, her shoes lie nearby, and behind her there is a stone. Fry stands and presses his hands to his chest, she sniffles and snot flows from her nose. Dina asks what's wrong with her and why she's standing and not moving, Dongfein replies that she did not understand him. He told her to dry her clothes and not burn them, Dina says that she accidentally mixed it up and giggles, Fry sneezes. Dunfein raises an eyebrow and asks Fry what happened. Fry says she doesn't fully understand it herself, she sits by the fire, and Dina watches her warily. Last night, countless dolls of darkness attacked her, she remembers how two monsters appeared from the forest thicket. Fry says she fought them until her strength ran out and she fell off a cliff. Dina pushes clothes towards her, she says Dongfein gave it to her, Fry says everything is fine. Dongfein asks how this could happen, Dinah hugs him and tells Fry to stay away from him. Fry says that she herself does not understand anything, because this is a common test for the title of warrior. 
Fry says the attack was very powerful and she has no idea how many people died, Dong Fein says that there is no point in thinking about the dead. Dong Fein frowns and says that in her current state, she won't be able to fight and it's better for her to stay with them. Fry blushes and looks away, she sheepishly thanks him for his concern. Rama smirks and asks how they carried out his order. He asks if the students have closed his question and discovered someone, the students respond that everything went well. They say they took a big risk and ask him not to forget his promise. Rama asks where A.I. Joe went, he looks around and tells them to go back to camp while he looks for him. A guy with a bald head and a band-aid on his forehead answers when his name is called A.I. Joe. Rama comes to him and asks if everything is done, the guy pushes off from the rock. A.I. Joe says everything is done, but he waited half a day, he asks why no one else came except Ram. Rama lazily closes one eye and tells him that they are most likely lost. A.I. Jia says that he wants to stop everything, because if it is revealed that they were hunting the best students, they will not be happy. He holds out a test tube with red liquid and says that he no longer needs any benefit. Rama comes to him and says that he understands everything, the guy hands him a test tube. Rama says that even if he leaves now, Frey's blood will remain on his hands. A.I. Jia asks why he is not ashamed to say such a thing, he says that Rama himself gave it to him and he did not know that he was capable of killing. Rama grins and tells him not to worry, because while they are partners, their whole idea remains a secret. Rama says that they can leave their team at any time, A.I. Jia rejoices at his words and promises not to tell anything. Suddenly, Rama stabs A.I. Jia in the stomach with a knife, a blood stain spreads across the guy's t-shirt. Rama says that he does not believe in empty promises, so only the dead leave their team. The guy looks down, realizing that he was shot in the stomach, he screams in pain. Rama asks if the others managed to find A.I. Jia, the guys answer that he has been gone for a long time. Rama offers to leave the guy a note and when he sees it, he will definitely catch up with them, the dolls of darkness approach A.I. Jia's body and sniff. His lifeless body is sprawled on the ground, his eyes are empty and there is a large blood stain on his t-shirt. Rama suggests moving forward, because their first goal is the testing tower. Fry makes a displeased face and says that they are on a test, and the two of them act like they are at a picnic. Dina hands her the meat on the bone and tells her to eat quickly, because it's just ready. Dong Fein fries the next piece and tells her not to worry because there are no dolls of darkness here. Fry says that a warrior must always be on his guard, otherwise he may pay the price, Dina says that there is probably no one here. Dong Fein covers her mouth with his hand so that she does not have time to say anything about her abilities. He says that they are just lucky and that is why the monsters do not approach them, Fry says she's disappointed in him. She says that even though he was expelled from the academy for fighting, she hoped that he would become an excellent soldier with his strength. But then he summoned this thing and became a laughing stock, Dong Fein smiles awkwardly. She says he sets up a tent and roasts meat during the death trial and hopes for luck. She asks if there is any trace of the soldier left in him. Dong Fein turns pale and doesn't know what to answer, Dinah frowns and pouts at Frey's words. The girl says that if she were him, she would get rid of such weapons and call for another, Dina yells at her to shut her mouth. Dina grinds her teeth and calls Frey a creature, she reminds them that they saved her, and she decided to separate them. Fry says she's just expressing her feelings, after all, it is obvious that with Dina he will not become a real warrior. Dina says that this does not concern her and if she knew how terrible Fry is, she would not have burned her coat, which attracted the dolls of darkness. Dong Fein looks at her in shock and asks if the coat really attracted the dolls of darkness. Dun Fein asks what Dina meant and how the jacket could provoke the dolls of darkness. Frey's clothes smelled of dolls of darkness and it was not surprising that they attacked her, Dong Fein asks why he didn't feel anything. She grins smugly and says that he will never match her detection skills. If Dinah had not burned Frey's clothes, the dolls would have found them in the blink of an eye. Fry asks if it is possible that she was marked during the fight, because before that she did not notice anything special. Dong Fein says that he believes Dina, because her nose is very sensitive to the smell of the dolls of darkness. Fry asks in disbelief how the nose of the weapon can be so sensitive to darkness. Dina says that this is not a simple smell and it is a thousand times stronger than usual, Fry wonders where the unusual smell could have come from. She recalls that on the day of the competition, when she entered the battlefield, something unusual happened. 
Among the crowd within the columns, someone was pushing people away and apologizing, because there was nowhere for an apple to fall. Fry remembers how some guy in shorts and with a bald head rubbed himself against her when she told him not to apologize. She straightened her jacket and found some mucus there, the guy had moved a fair distance by that time. She looked at her hand, which was dripping with mucus, and wondered if it was left by the guy who pushed everyone away. She says that they are all warriors of the goddess and asks how could someone do such a thing to another person. Dong Fein says that no one can be trusted and asks if she knew him, she replies that she was friends with everyone at the academy. Dong Fein says that without a reason it is even more terrible, Fry raises her hand to her mouth in shock and asks if he thinks her friend set her up. Dong Fein hopes he is wrong, but if this is a widespread problem, then perhaps someone is sabotaging the other members. Something falls between the rocks from the sky and raises a cloud of dust into the air, forest and mountains are visible in the distance. The purple hair guy strikes a dramatic pose and tells the vile scum to attack him quickly. He picks up his hairdryer and shouts that, compared to them, he looks even more dazzling. He points the hairdryer at the doll of darkness that emerged from the ground and activates his divine weapon. He burns a huge hole in the monster with a deadly tornado, without leaving his place. The guy with purple hair frowns and calls the monster a small and insignificant creature. He turns his gaze to his team and says that such a bipod will never defeat their strongest trio. The guy with red hair attacks the monster with a deadly crest of darkness. A black girl with blonde hair attacks a doll of darkness with scissors and the deadly guillotine technique. All three of them let go of their weapons and say that this doll is a real weakling compared to them. Suddenly the ground beneath their feet begins to tremble, pebbles bounce off the ground. The guy and girl turn to the guy with red hair and ask what's going on, the ground shakes under their feet. The guy replies that he had nothing to do with it, the girl says she has a bad feeling, they assume it was an earthquake. The girl notices that the sound is getting closer, the trio begins to look around them. The girl opens her mouth in shock and notices something in front of her, she shouts for everyone to look there. In the distance, hidden by clouds of dust, a huge silhouette with long tentacles moves, people run up to the edge of the cliff, but something immediately kills them. Someone wearing a helmet runs to the end of the cliff, but suddenly blood sprays from his helmet, the tentacle pierced him right through his chest. The tentacle throws the man off the tentacle and he flies away like a doll, the guy from the trio shudders at this sight. The dust clears and it turns out that there are many dolls of darkness standing on the cliff. The girl shouts that these are dolls of darkness and asks why there are so many of them in one place. She tugs at the purple-haired guy's sleeve and asks him what they should do, he froze in complete horror. Rama looks in their direction and says that they should run and save themselves now, suddenly, a beam of energy shoots into the sky. He calls A.I. Ju a fool and says that no one will feel sorry for him, because he just stood and watched as Dong Fein was saved by Fry. He throws a test tube with red liquid on the ground and says that everyone who must die must die. The fragments lie on the ground. Rama says that nothing can be fixed and since A.I. Jera is unlucky, he will also go to hell for them. Fry examines the twig and suddenly stands up and hits Dong Fein on the head with it and says that they need to leave. Dong Fein says that they are in no hurry and continues to fry the meat over the fire. Fry asks why they are taking their time since her classmates could be in trouble, she asks if he is afraid. Dong Fein frowns and turns pale, realizing that he might actually be afraid. Fry takes the twig in both hands and remembers the words of his grandfather, who runs the academy. He said that being a warrior of the goddess, they must be brave, honest and destroy evil all the time. Dunfein believes that Fry seems to be normal, but she is too obsessed with the old man. He turns and sees the old director in Frey's place. She asks if he is coming or not, Dunfein replies that they don't know where to go, what they're up to and how to find them. Fry frowns at his words and doesn't know what to answer, Dong Fein suggests thinking and regaining strength first. Fry says she can't be as cold-blooded as him, she feels it is her duty to save those in trouble. She grabs a stick and decides that they are destined to be separated, she says he can remain a coward and wait here. Dong Fein turns to look at her, disappointed and detached, she angrily says goodbye to him. Dong Fein asks Dina what is going on in this girl's head, the two of them look after her. Dina decides that Fry is doomed to meet the dolls, because she feels them in that direction, Dong Fein turns around worriedly. Fry decides that even if he doesn't find anyone, this is a better solution than just sitting still. 
She decides to find A.I. Je, because he cannot be forgiven for his actions, she wants to ask why he did this. She freezes in place and wonders if he is really ready to do something like that for the sake of an artifact. Suddenly the face of a monster appears next to her, she notices a doll of darkness next to her. Suddenly someone covers her mouth with his hand, Dong Fein tells her to stand still and not move. He retreats behind a tree and orders her to remain silent, he looks out from behind the trunk at a huge spider-like monster with glowing eyes. Dong Fein says that he knows where to find a person similar in description and he will help her find him if she trusts him. The doll of darkness clumsily squeezes past the tree trunks, Dong Fein hugs Fry. The doll of darkness finally leaves and Dong Fein breathes a sigh of relief, Fry turns pale from lack of air. She turns around and asks if he really wants to strangle her, she realizes that he was following her. Dina crawls out of the bushes and says that it was her idea, Dong Fein says that if they follow the dolls, they will find the students. Fry frowns and says that tracking a flock of dark dolls is impossible without consequences. Dong Fein says that if she wants to save others, she needs to try different ways. He extends his hand to her as a sign of truce, Fry frowns and agrees with him unhappily. Dong Fein says he wants to punish the freak who is turning a deadly competition into a battle royale. Dong Fein, Dina and Fry are walking along the road in the forest, rays of sun shine through the branches. Fry frowns in confusion and wonders how they will be able to find the rest of the students. The dolls of darkness contain enormous power and cannot be tracked, Fry is unhappy that they are being led by the narrow-minded Dina. Fry shouts that they have been walking in circles for half a day and have not found anyone, she asks what is the reason. Dunfane tells her not to worry, because Dina is trying to smell the place where the dolls are gathering, Fry asks how she will find them. Dong Fein laughs awkwardly and says that he has already told you what a great sense of smell Dina has. Fry frowns and asks why he treats her like a fool and what kind of nose Dina has. Dong Fein says that they have no other choice and the only option is to wander around and hope that they find them. Dong Fein says they just need to be patient, Dina shouts that she found them. Dina raises her hand and says that 500 meters from here there are a lot of dolls of darkness. She points forward and says that there is also the smell that was on Frey's clothes. Dong Fein turns his gaze to where Dina is pointing and says that he suspected so, Fry looks at the two in bewilderment. Fry asks if Dina is joking when she talks about 500 meters, Dina says it's already 400, Dong Fein asks what this means. Dina says that they are approaching them faster and faster, Dong Fein asks if she is joking. Dina says that they are already in front of them, an animal roar is heard above the forest and the red face of a doll of darkness appears from the bushes. Dong Fein is in shock and disbelief, Dina frowns, and Fry looks straight ahead in confusion. The guy with purple hair uses his weapon on the doll and shouts that it's time for them to run away. The guy falls head over heels to the ground after the monster, raising dust into the air. The guy with purple hair stands up on trembling arms and asks who is next to him. He recognizes Dunfein and Fry and sits down on the ground, the guy asks what they are doing here, other students flee from the forest, pursued by dolls of darkness. Fry recognizes Shirley and the others, Dong Fein sees a whole crowd of dolls running after them. Countless monsters appear from the forest, Dong Fein shouts that it is time to run away, he asks why Dina didn't say that there are so many of them. Dong Fein is carried on his back by Fry, Dina says she would have told him, but he didn't ask her. Dina sniffs and notices that all the students have the same smell on their clothes. The guy with purple hair asks Fry why she is in their company, all the students run together through the forest. Dong Fein looks around and orders everyone to take off their clothes, his eyebrows are drawn together on the bridge of his nose. The guy with purple hair asks if he's okay, Dong Fein says this is necessary for survival. Fry says that it is better to listen to him, and she will explain all the details later. The guy with purple hair narrows his eyes in disbelief and asks if this is some kind of joke. Fry says that they don't have time to chat and that everyone should take off their clothes quickly. Everyone begins to tear off a piece of clothing as they please, continuing to run away, Dong Fein shouts for everyone to take off their clothes quickly. A girl with dark skin shouts that their squad only recently acquired these clothes. The guy with purple hair shouts that these are the new items of the season and angrily rips off his clothes. He narrows his eyes and glares at Dong Fang and says that if he deceive them, he will turn him into a new pair of boots. The girl turns around and attracts the boss's attention, 
the two of them turn around. The dolls of darkness stopped and stopped chasing them, one of them began to tear at the boss's shirt. The students ask why those dolls were chasing clothes. Two dolls of darkness that look like big cats have their mouths open and roar, their eyes sparkle in the shadows. Dong Fein tries to catch his breath while standing on a cliff above the forest, Fry calls out to Dunfein. She turns to him and sincerely thanks him for saving all the students. Dong Fein is glad that they managed to escape, but it is not safe here and they need to figure out where to go next. The dolls are still roaming around, students rest after a long marathon of running from monsters. The guys had absolutely no strength left, Dong Fein is not happy that so many problems have fallen on his head. Fry says that the squad of Shirley, Da and Tu Fan is the strongest of all the students. If the strongest are taken out of the game, then it will be easier for the remaining participants to win. The students sit on a stone mountain and relax, some kind of monster is watching them. Anyone who uses dark dolls to win is not worthy of the title of goddess warrior. Dina looks at the students and says that they are already boring her with their boring speeches. She asks Dong Fein why they should worry about everyone, Dong Fein replies that in such a situation it is impossible not to participate. Dina is stubborn and says that she will not take care of anyone except Dong Fein. Fry asks if everything is clear to everyone, she looks around anxiously at the forest below. The students do not understand how someone can control the dolls and they cannot believe it. Fry says that she didn't believe it at first either, but Dong Fein suspects that someone is deliberately causing problems for them. The guys don't understand why they should trust Dong Fang, the guy with red hair says it might be true. The guy with purple hair is furious and asks why anyone would get rid of it. The dark-skinned girl says it's most likely due to the Evangelion stone. Fry says that he and Dunfein think so too, she looks away thoughtfully. The guy with the shaved head asks Fry why Deng Fana would want to help them. He says that Dong Fein may want to ingratiate himself or gain favor with the phrase. Dina stood over the guy and called him an idiot, he throws his head back and asks what she's talking about. Dina frowns and says that Dong Fein obviously just saved them out of the goodness of his heart. She shouts that they didn't even thank him, but they are already sitting and slandering him, the guy recoils from her. The guy brings his face closer to her and says that she is just a useless divine weapon that Dong Fein is summoned. The guy activates the seal and says that she is not a person and she is far from that title. Almost as far away as being a divine weapon, Dina frowns at his words. The guy begins to summon his divine weapon and says that now she will receive a demonstration of real power for her insolence. The students turn around and see the skinhead summoning his divine weapon, there is bewilderment on their faces. He summons an axe and shouts that a divine weapon should look like this, and it looks more like a joke than something worthwhile. The guy grins and asks if she knows how to fight or protect her summoner in real combat. He says that trash like Dong Fein is trash and shines, he says the guy will always be trash, Dina's eyes begin to glow. The clouds above them turn into a funnel, she screams at him to shut up. Dina got angry and raised her hand, the skinhead holds his weapon in his hand and looks at her with confusion. He starts laughing, there are blue patterns of magic on his face, he says her anger looks fun. Dong Fein grabs Dina's arm, stopping her attempted strike. He himself hits the skinhead in the face, instead of her, reminding him that he was asked to shut up. The shaven-headed guy flies back, saliva flies from his mouth and snot from his nose, he screams and falls on his back. Fry shouts why Dunfein is doing such a thing, the students run up worriedly with the guy who was hit. The guy with the shaved head calls Dongfein a psycho and asks why he hit him, because they are all comrades and participants in the trial. Dongfein frowns and looks at everyone from under his brows, he says the guy deserved this blow. Dongfein tells him to remain silent in future if he can't say anything smart, Dina looks over Dongfein's shoulder. He says that it doesn't matter to him who they think Dina is, because she is special to him, Dina blushes. He says that even though she is a weapon, he considers her a comrade and an equal, Dina's face droops. Fry helps the skinhead up, Dongfein tells him to watch his language if life is precious. The guy with purple hair and the girl with dark skin look at Dong Fang warily and realize that he is not a weakling at all. The skinhead wipes his mouth with the back of his hand and smiles, he says that one day Dong Fein will get his. He shouts that he will take revenge on him for this blow, Dong Fein says that he will wait impatiently and turns away. Dong Fein says they'd better worry about uninvited guests now. He looks down from the cliff and clenches his fists, 
the students become wary and ask what guests he is talking about. The skinhead pushes Fry away from him and gets to his feet with an angry expression on his face. The guy walks to the edge and tells Dongfeng to stop talking, because there is actually nothing dangerous there. He notices a whole crowd of dolls of darkness below and realizes that they are all moving in their direction. The skinhead swallows nervously and looks down with horror on his face, he doesn't know what to say. Dong Fein says to thank that idiot for the noise he made here earlier. A guy with purple hair and a dark-skinned girl approach the skinhead, they look over the cliff. The boss screams and calls the shaven-headed guy a thick-headed idiot, the girl shudders when she sees the monsters below. The girl grabs the guy by the nipples and shouts that if he himself wanted to die, then there is no point in dragging others along with him, the guy mutters that he didn't do it on purpose. The girl pulls his nipples and screams that they are dead and all thanks to an idiot who cannot control himself. The guy with purple hair turns pale and looks into the distance with disappointment, he mutters that he will die a virgin. The guy with red hair says that in their current state, they won't be able to defeat such a crowd. He says they don't have the strength to fight or run away, Fry looks away, trying to figure out what to do. Dong Fein says he has an idea, he says this quietly, but everyone immediately becomes wary. The students turn to him and ask him what his idea is and what they can do. Dong Fein looks down at the monsters, he says he appreciated the speed of their movement. He steps on a pebble and says that they have a little time until the monsters get to them. He pushes a pebble down and says that one of them can go down and distract the dolls of darkness. This deception will give the others a chance to escape safely, a pebble bounces off the surface of a rock. The stone bounces off the face of the doll of darkness, Dong Fein doesn't know which of the disciples present would do such a thing. Dun Fein asks who is ready to take such a risk and devote themselves to fulfilling a great mission in the name of the goddess. The students become sad and realize that this is actually suicide, they are silent and do not know what to answer. Fry shakes her head from side to side and is indignant at the cowardice of her classmates. She activates the seal on her hand, summoning her divine weapon and saying that she will distract all beings. She frowns and tries to concentrate on summoning the weapon. Beads of sweat appear on her face and her frown deepens. Suddenly she falls to her knees, she is still too weak to summon weapons, much less distract monsters. Fry trembles and curses to himself, she lowered her head in disappointment, Dong Fein says she shouldn't go. Dong Fein says that in her current state, going down to the monsters is absolutely useless. Fry says that everything is fine and she can hold out until everyone escapes, she says she will go down to the dolls. Dong Fein looks at her with doubt and excitement, Dina shouts that let her go down and they will run away. Dun Fein calls Fry stupid and says that he will go down himself and distract the monsters to himself. Dina's eyes widen in surprise, she asks what Dong Fein just said. She screams that he shouldn't even think about such things. Fry frowns and looks at Dong Fein. The director is told that a suspiciously large number of students died this time, the director presses his finger against the scanner. The guard asks what they should do if this continues, the director tells them to do whatever is necessary. Two figures stand next to a blue ball, they are wearing red clothes, they greet the director. The director wonders what the church community is doing here. People from the community say that there are too many deaths in the test and the movement of the dark dolls is very strange. The director asks about the summary for now, the churchman says they were unable to find out the reasons. The cleric says that the dark dolls are moving far beyond the testing field. The churchman says that he heard that the director's granddaughter is also participating in the test. The director looks at the red dots representing monsters and realizes that Fry is in danger. Fry winces, frowns and thanks Dunfane for his kindness. She stands at the edge of the cliff and says that the responsibility she takes on is not his concern. Dong Fein looks up vaguely and remains silent, shrugging his shoulders. Fry is covered in scratches and thanks Dun Fein for wasting his strength for so many days. Dong Fein frowns and tells her to stop, because she will simply fall into the clutches of the monsters and will not even stop them. The guy with purple hair asks if Dong Fein can take the dolls away from here, the skinhead replies that the dolls only came for him. Dong Fein barks at them to go downstairs themselves if they have that much energy to talk the guys turn away and clear their throats. Dun Fein says his plan is that he will go down and they will take Dina with them and run away, Dina clings to him and refuses. The purple hair guy asks if they should run away without him, the dark woman asks if he is sure he wants to go downstairs. 
Dong Fein says that he is not doing this for their sake and asks him to take care of Dina, Dina looks around anxiously and says that she doesn't want to leave without him. She starts crying and screams that she doesn't want to leave him and says that they can run away on their own, leaving the losers behind. Fry frowns and opens his mouth to say something, but remains silent, she looks at Dong Fang knowingly. The guy stands at the edge of the cliff and tells them to take care of Dina, Fry holds Dina close to him. He smiles, giving them a parting glance, his face is backlit by the setting sun. Dong Fein walks closer to the cliff and looks down at the dense vegetation at the base of the mountain. A terrible and loud roar of the Dolls of Darkness is heard under the mountain, they are all approaching the mountain on which the heroes stand. Dina arches her back and screams for Dong Fein not to leave her, Fry holds the girl and frowns. Dunfein jumps down and shouts that he is counting on Fry to fulfill his request. Dongfein lands next to the darkness doll, there is determination in his eyes, he fearlessly looks at the mouth full of sharp teeth in front of him. He grits his teeth and starts the game, he runs past the dolls of darkness and runs into the forest, the monsters look after him. Dina shouts that she wants to go to Dungfana so that she can be released to him, Fry screams for Dina to calm down. Fry says that he is holding her so that she does not go to certain death, Dina sobs and looks down. The guy with purple hair says that Dongfein is already a corpse anyway and his weapon will disappear immediately after his death. Fry has difficulty keeping Dina from running after her master. Dina cries and asks if Dongfein will really die, Fry tells everyone to shut up. The guy with purple hair says that when a warrior dies, so does his summoned weapon. The guy says he's sorry. Fry tells him to express his regrets later. Dina starts crying again and says that Dong Fein cannot die. Dina clenches her teeth and begins to lose consciousness, the name Dong Fein is all she can think of in her head. Dina begins to lose consciousness, Fry screams, unable to hold her, a golden seal appears in Dina's eyes. Dina's hair turns from pink to wheat, Dina starts screaming herself. She is consumed by a golden stream of energy that envelopes her entire body, Fry stands behind and tries to stand and hold the girl. Fry opens his eyes slightly and tries to see what kind of ray of light it was, sparks of energy dance in the air around her. Frey's eyes widen and he looks around for Dina, small particles of energy fly around her face. Fry looks at the mark on the ground and asks the guys standing behind where Dina went. The seal of the sacred weapon is an honor bestowed upon a brave warrior by the goddess as proof that he has been granted the sacred weapon. A girl with white hair turns the page, she was interested in the honor bestowed by the goddess. The Evangelion stone contains divine magical power and resonates with divine weapons. The girl laughs and blushes, she says that the book contains a bunch of lies about the stone. The girl turns the page and is surprised how many fantasies fit on the pages of this book. The old lady asks if the girl is going to enroll in the Divine Weapon Academy. The old woman wishes her luck and asks her to deal with all the dark dolls, they reach the southern capital. The bus slows down and you can hear the wheels squeaking, the driver announces that they have arrived at the final destination. Someone coughs politely, attracting the girl's attention, she turns her violet eyes to the man. A man with a mustache and a cap coughs and tells the girl that they have arrived at the final station. The girl says that she needs to go to the southern capital, and not to the final station, the man says that the southern capital is the final station. The girl opens her suitcase and puts a book in it, he understandably agrees with the driver. The girl leaves the bus and tries to connect the concepts of the southern capital and the final station. The girl straightens her hair, on which there is a blue flower, whether he knows someone who she needs. She turns to the mustachio driver who is sweeping the floor and asks about Dong Fein. Dong Fein runs with all his might across the open area, he is breathing heavily from a long run. Dong Fein turns around and glances at the monsters running after him, beads of sweat run down his face. He leans forward and begins to run faster, trying to get away from the monster and towards the huge jaw. The monster with red eyes moves closer and closer to him and jumps, the monster misses, and Dong Fein somersaults to avoid the attack. He gets to his feet and continues to run, looking back at the Doll of Darkness, which has already begun to turn in his direction. Dong Fein breathes tiredly, he turns around and sees tentacles appearing above the trees. The green tentacles attack and try to crush Dong Fein, but he jumps out of the way in time. Dong Fein deftly lands on his knee and pushes off the ground with his hand to run further, he looks back warily. The tentacles move towards him and attack Dong Fein again, 
missing and piercing the ground, sending dust into the air. Dong Fein is out of breath, frowning and looking ahead. He leaves the forest, in which rustling, roaring and crunching of branches can be heard due to the monsters that are chasing him. Dong Fein sees something in front of him, an object that will help him escape from danger. Dong Fein sees scraps of clothing in front of him, he decides to use them because of the smell, which is what the Dolls of Darkness came for. He decides to take the clothes from the monster who is messing with them. Then he wants to attract the attention of the other monsters and lead them further away from this place. Dong Fein laughs and runs on, hoping to carry out his plan. There are a lot of cuts on his face and sweat running down his cheeks. He approaches the Doll of Darkness, which holds torn clothes in its mouth. Dong Fein slides under the monster's mouth and pulls out the remnants of clothing from its teeth. Dong Fein runs quickly in the shadows of tall trees, flashing between the trunks. Suddenly something behind him catches his attention, he stops on his heels and tries to catch his breath. Dong Fein leans against a tree trunk and breathes heavily, he realizes that his strength is almost running out. Dong Fein glances behind him and hears stomping from there, he realizes that Fry and the others are already far enough away and the dark dolls are moving towards him. Dong Fein clutches the rag in his hand and inhales. He throws a rag into the face of the leaping monster, blinding it. The beast continues to run further, and the others begin to chase it. Dong Fein looks out from behind a tree and sees dolls of darkness rushing past, chasing a monster with clothes on its face. Dong Fein is happy that now he will be able to escape, a leaf from the tree above him falls at his feet. Dong Fein looks around and moves away from the tree. He looks into the sky and sees birds flying into the distance. Dong Fein looks around, hearing some rustling. Dong Fein opens his eyes in shock. He coughs and notices a sharp spike covered in blood in front of him, drops of blood fly into his face. Dong Fein is horrified to see that a giant thorn has pierced his chest from the back, a blood stain begins to spread across his jacket. The thorn enters back, locking itself more firmly into Dong Fein's body and causing him to feel dizzy. The vine, to which the thorn was attached, flies into the air, carrying the screaming Dong Fein with it. The guy bulges his eyes in pain, drops of blood come out of his mouth. Liana throws Dong Fein off her and hits him on the ground, knocking the air out of his lungs. Blood flows from Dong Fein's mouth, he understands that not all the dolls of darkness ran away after the rag. Looming over him is a terrifying muzzle, vaguely reminiscent of a smiling face, and surrounded by tentacles. The creature descends from the tree and looms over Dong Fein, who is lying on the ground. Dong Fein's hand is shaking, he sees the outlines of a divine seal appear on her. Fry frowns in concern and asks if Dong Fein might still be alive. The guy with purple hair says that he can't stand against so many dark dolls, but he is grateful to the guy for his dedication. The skinhead looks away and says that it doesn't matter whether he survived or not and invites everyone to set out on the road. Students walk in their underwear among the trees, the girl says they need to be honest. She frowns and says that they are only alive because of Dungfana. The students exchange worried and guilty glances. The dark-skinned girl says that it is as if they are stepping over his corpse and moving on happily. Fry asks her not to say that, because Dunfane saved them, but they have to find the culprit of all this chaos. She turns around and says that they have to get to the challenge tower and find the bastard who did this. The students flinch at such statements, there is confusion on their faces. Fry looks at the tower ahead and says that he will punish the one who caused so much death and casualties. She looks down and frowns guiltily, she thinks about Dongfang's sacrifice and asks the gods to protect him. Dong Fein looks ahead with intense eyes, more blood comes out of his mouth and drops of blood slide down his face. Many tentacles with sharp ends pierced his chest, he hung lifelessly on them, bleeding. 